Good evening, everybody. I just noticed there's a little What's cat toy. Oh. Whoops. No, it's a McDonald's toy. <laughs> Whoops. That's what the cats play with. Either way, somehow you got to occupy them. Welcome, everybody. I think this is the first time people are going to be seeing this, the final setup. This is our new setup officially, and we're just going to be building on from here. So welcome to all the to the new setup. Let's get some round of applause going. <laughs> also, in addition to the new setup, I wanted to make note of two new emojis for our awesome members. Check them out in the chat. I just sent them. One says Come here, bony. smell check and the other one says stinky. Both of them feature baloney's face, which I mean, I am the creator of that. So I think they're pretty awesome. But let us know what you think. We need to add one of Tom pretty soon here. I have not um, gained any inspiration from the grid on that one, unfortunately. But Thank more you. to come soon. Thank you to all our members. Putting baloney in the chat. We're stinky tonight, baby. <laughs> we are planning on screaming for an hour this evening because I am evidently sick. So I am trying to maintain my voice because of my job. And so, and I had to go to the doctor today for an even unrelated reason because I am coming up on my surgery and my pre-op appointment was today, and I'm officially getting a partial hysterectomy on the 20th, so. We're hitting that uterus. We are. <laughs> I, Not we, is Jordan, but. I cannot seem to win with my health lately, so. I am here, no less. Um, so, for the guy that we're gonna be talking about today, like, if you call us ugly, or if you call me ugly today, that's just low-hanging fruit. It's is rude too. Like I'm sorry. Um, welcome Terrestrial Kingdom to, to Butter Brickan. I uh, yeah, <laughs> I didn't even think of that. <laughs> um, interesting thing with the new setup is now we get to wear ear pods, oh. so it doesn't uh show up in the in our microphones because we're close. <laughs> Anyway, happy Tuesday, everybody. Hope everybody's Tuesday's going great. Hope everybody's week's going great. Uh, we got some interesting bullshit for you <laughs> tonight. <laughs> Let me uh, make sure everything... We're just going to get on it because, you know. Why wait? Why are we... Okay, there we go. Esther, feel better soon, Jordan. Thank you. Appreciate your well wishes because Jordan could use a win. Um, okay, so as the title says, um, there is some interesting kind of uh, Tim Ballard ap ap apologia, apologia. Which one are we rocking with? Which pronunciation? Great apologia, question. apologia. Let me know. I pe I've heard people say it in the comments or – say it before diff both ways people are saying my mic's not working um are you all the way in it's working jordan's just quiet i don't feel like i'm being that quiet apologia also again i say apologia this guy decided to pick the least flattering photo of me for this thumbnail so okay let me get let me get this on <laughs> So to preface the uh, the interesting Tim Ballard uh, dick writing, apology is kind of, I mean, it's, it's kind of generous because this guy's been talking about Tim Ballard for months in a positive light. Um, so this comes from the channel Last Dispensation, and this video in particular came all the way back in December 14th. We were made aware of this situation because we got, it we got mentioned. Us. So, um, and then we went and found it. We went and found it. 
We thought it was hilarious. Usually yeah. on a channel with 11K, that would be punching down. Did uh, we respond? Did we say no. anything? No, no, we thought it was funny. We brought it up and thought it was hilarious. And I think it's annoying and kind of misogynistic. But yeah. But since he wants to stick his neck out for Timmy, um, you know, I would like to bring this up real quick. So for your consideration, this Those of you little who have bit here. Hold on. Let me... Uh, let me change things real quick. Do I have it over here? Pause for one second. I guess I can. Let me turn off the. There we go. All right. Now you guys should be able to hear it the right way. Okay. I'll back it up a couple seconds. Hi, anybody together because they're Latter-day Saints. Or more importantly, for those of you who have followed uh, a lot of this and know who these people are, these other podcasters, uh, what they do is they... Can I'm so glad that we qualify as other podcasters now. Great. Connect this <laughs> Visions of Glory book. And because... I wish this were the thumbnail, too. This isn't even the thumbnail. He just, like, threw this in because he's talking to... What's her name? Janet Rusan, the uh, fortune teller. What does she even call herself? The Medium, the psychic. Because uh, Jody Hildebrandt and Chad Daybell read the book, know of it, like it, and even spoke at some of the same conferences that Tim had. Tim even mentioned his good friendship with one or a couple of them before they went and killed people and did some horrible things in the name of weirdness. Now, I know personally some people that have read. Yeah, this is the lady that talks to Nephi. Correct. Um, so. That would go on operations. I guess is credibility. Tag yourself, chat. You're on screen. Oh, let me, I'm just getting this over here so we can see it at all times. Uh, but yeah, they're they're talking about the Visions of Glory book that we were um, talking about as of late. And uh, he's kind of out there putting it out there that it's just ridiculous that in any way, shape, or form could there be any sort of connection between this book and what those people do and Tim and, and such. And he vehemently denies whatever Tim has been accused of because I don't know, maybe his critical thinking skills aren't the best or whatever. He just wants to meet ride. Do you think Tom Harrison's book? I haven't read it. I have no desire to read it. And uh, I don't particularly think that it has anything to do with my salvation. And I am a member of the church of Jesus Christ, the Latter-day Saints. And right. I guarantee you that most people don't know of that book who who are active members of the church hard disagree um and don't go to that's a lot of exactly these conferences. why i, I wanted to bring this up too an active member and just because he's they're trying to like dispel any sort of connection or and just like i've said we've said in the past like when people get burned like when when tim got burned everybody turned on him and was like oh well i you know, whatever, except for like a few key people like Glenn Beck and people who were just like even Glenn Beck kind of turned on him in the end. Yeah. Well, initially, Glenn Beck was like, uh, but like the church went and was like, no, nope, like it's not that deep. He didn't have a personal relationship with M. Russell Ballard, the apostle, the late apostle, rest in piss and all this stuff. And the same thing with uh, Tom, like everybody was just they loved this book for in Utah for years and years and years. And I then, even, yeah, I mean, my family wasn't even Utah Mormons, so. Yeah, and then suddenly, I mean, I guess a lot of people started taking issue with it because in Mormonism it is apostasy, and Deseret Books stopped publishing it and or stopped printing womp, womp. it. So, anyway. Now, I do believe wholeheartedly in in the freedom 
to believe in what you want as long as you don't hurt other people. Now, I honestly know, and Janet knows, that they don't associate with people uh, that hurt children and other people like some of these people did. They don't believe in starving your children. Uh, they don't believe like, in associating themselves with harmful children yet. But women, not. women, adult women, fair game, I guess. And that's not without the ample amounts of children harm that is currently going on in the church. Like, how many articles have we read about <laughs> right. where there is, like, little to no difference between the Mormon church and the Catholic church when it comes to men who are abusing children within Mormonism? Like, eventually it starts to become not a coincidence and something that you need to sit with and take a fucking harder look at. Yeah. Honestly, it would have been a more uh, quote unquote valiant or like real situation if Tim was going off after people who were harming children within the church instead of off allegedly overseas, allegedly rescuing children that yeah, this is happening there's in not a lot of evidence yeah. of. Yeah, he's okay with just going to church and it happening there, but overseas he's got to draw the line up. there. Yeah, he's got to. Oh. He's got to draw the line. Like Jody Hildebrandt and Ruby Frank did. Um, and I don't even know much about the stories, but I'm telling you, you can't. Why are you speaking on it? Connect the causation and correlation principle because somebody knew somebody at a conference and maybe were. And this is, this is exactly the kind of dummy shit that I was hoping he wouldn't try to do when <laughs> we first heard this. I was like, He's really trying to say that we are out here saying they did this because they read this book. And Tim will do the same, does the same kind of shit because he read this book. We are trying to say that we do not exist inside of a vacuum. And content like this, that people take very literally, this is not fictional or anything like that. It will influence people in a way. Mm-hmm. If you are not primed for that influence, then it's not going to happen. But something was already there, and this may have helped set that off for a lot of these freaks and exactly. criminals. Well, and if you think that we're saying that visions of glory caused these kids to be murdered, then no, you're like, that's corny. One, you don't watch what we say or listen to what we have yeah. to say, which is very likely because you're just like probably you don't. Yeah, you don't want to. <laughs> you don't want to engage engage critically. You just want to. Ugh, Tim. Oh, I love Tim. Dummy, goofy stuff. Who's this person again? So this guy is I nobody, even, essentially. I don't, I don't know, know his what his name, name is. Um, if I go back here... It's don't go back. I, nobody something. cares. Anyway, The Last Dispensation on YouTube. The Tim Meat Writer. That's like <laughs> all we need to know. We're friends with them before they committed heinous crimes and went crazy. So that's how the Matthiases... That's how John DeLynn and that's how these other podcasters such as this Jordan and McKay couple who looked so happy when, when they had the light of Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish he would have put us up on the screen what to show us up. What photo was he looking at? He was looking at our wedding photos. I guarantee it. What? Because that's the only, really the only photos that we've shown pre-leaving the church of us together. We don't have a lot of them now. Uh, uh, that's out in public and stuff like that. So, I also hadn't had a baby. <laughs> I didn't develop medical trauma PTSD from an unmedicated C-section. I didn't we, gain a bunch of weight. We'd also paid hundreds, an amount of money. if not thousands of dollars for makeup, clothing, and photography. Uh-huh. Yeah. Like this was the best of the best that we are, are ever going to get in our lives if we, we have don't want price, to shell out for and it. Now it's gone. Yeah, but okay. Now oh here. look at us, fat, long hair, fat man, bad, fucking ugly, <laughs> bitch, so, ugly, nice buddy. I can't hear what's coming out of your mouth because the only thing I see is ugly. I know, right? Like, okay, <laughs> that's great. Is that the best criticism you got? Anyway, did <laughs> I'll he, go cry about it later. Did he say any other stuff? And the Holy Ghost. I look at a lot of these people. Now, I don't agree. I can be friends with people and not agree with their religious beliefs. Well, good thing right. for you. I'll make it real easy. <laughs> don't want to be your friend. Also, I can hear your mic 
clipping because of how you're doing your editing. I hope it's not AI because you need to dial it up or pay for it because it fucking sucks. Anyway, <laughs> so that's our little intro to who this guy is. Great. Uh, like into a third of the horrible comments we've gotten since we started this. Right. Show. That was great. <laughs> Fat, long hair. Ugly. Bitch. Some, some dude yesterday in the comments, he was like, oh, yeah, so you guys can like uh, braid your own, your hair. What? Braid each other's <laughs> hair. I was like, yeah, yeah, but what what are you even talking about? Oh, also, everybody was so upset by the headbands. Oh, oh my god! Every time, so triggered over the headbands. Everybody always gets upset by them. I don't know why. So triggered, and of course the guy he had his uh, YouTube name as his like real name first and last. And my man has been back from his mission for at least tw since at least 2018. Still not married because he's a meathead gym bro with no personality. Anyway, so. This is the title of this little mini series, I guess. This is episode one. Uh, 20K views, which over the last little while. For his channel is probably good, right? Uh, it's absolutely st stellar. Um, okay. I guess five months ago he was getting like 40K. Uh, but as of late, he's really fallen off. Let's see. 1K one or 2.5. I guess there was a 40 right thing, there. My friend. It is a finicky thing. Although the. Why is the trailer like a third of the time of, anyway. Because Nine minutes is too long for a trailer, buddy. Which it's interesting because I would think that his views would even be a little higher, really, because of um, the length of his content. Because you, like it's my belief with YouTube that unless you're like a phenomenal like documentary style YouTube channel I've gained a lot of traction, like somebody like Snoop, that your tendency is going to be the longer the video, long form content does not do as well as a lot of short form content. Yeah. And so it wouldn't surprise me, but his videos aren't like that long. Like his, I mean, I thought it would be better than this, but I don't know. Yeah. Well, that, that one with Janet was like two hours is a long one. Cause he um, interviewed her. Yeah. But I guess we're looking at like the 10 to 30 minute yeah, range on most of these. But it is crazy that he got like double the amount of views in only one more day time on the stupid trailer. <laughs> yeah, it is interesting. <laughs> anyway, we'll go back. We'll let her rip. Is that on this one? Go. One more. Ballard reported sexual mis- Uh, I wanted to leave this part out because I didn't want to get claimed. If you didn't know what Tim did, we've done videos on it, so just go backwards. Yeah. In a lawsuit linked to their mission, their family, their very legacy hangs in the balance. This is giving me twilight. Imagine guys. dedicating your life to the noblest cause, rescuing thousands of children from the clutches of- Except we don't have any evidence that you've actually done any of that. So if you were doing that, I'd be like, hmm, maybe rescuing children is a noble cause. And that's what everybody's yeah. bought into. But you're not actually doing that from what people are we, finding out. We don't even have any like real concrete proof that he worked in Homeland Security in the capacity that he claims that he did. Right. Because so like, the Fed can't confirm it because it's classified information. But they have said that he could that he could say he could allow it. And he chooses not to. So Which, like... I mean, if if it takes consent, I don't know. That might be not true. But if all all it takes is consent to uh, release that information, I don't think it was that top that classified. Uh, okay, sir. Of <laughs> evil. Only to find yourself in a web of what seems to be unfounded accusations and outright lies. In the darkest hours, unfounded. when heroes fall, will we stand by and watch? Yo, bro, it sucks when your heroes fall, but I know sometimes don't meet your heroes. The cold hard truth of it is like that's reality. Like you only know what Tim has put out there. Like he has curated a personality and a profile for the internet, and that is what you know. You do not know the actual Tim, and maybe you guys are like besties IRL. And, like, if that's the case, then disregard this. But the majority of people don't know him. They know, like, just because, like, know just like this him. guy doesn't know us. 
you know the personality and the information that we've curated for social media. So I'm not even arguing with a person at this point. I'm arguing with the personality that exists that he has created in the media where he's like this poor tortured soul who's being disrupted by the poor woke mob for <laughs> the darn woke mob rescue children and you know whatever yeah i mean did we not did we not all see those same 38 pages of text messages before they got a burner we read them all and it's not like screenshots it's like the whole damn thing a whole record or will we rise to lift them as they have lifted so many. I will not help lift him anything. The fate of the Ballard family and the countless lives they've touched now rests in our hands. No, it doesn't. Dude, this they sounds- They want you to believe it does. This is a PR move. And if, this, the, if he's 100%. not behind this, this is like, like what a great friend this guy is that's trying to do this Seriously. for him. Because they're trying to make it into a, only you can fix this situation. And then what does this do? It arms Mormons to like take up this as a cause and like fight to the death for somebody they don't even know or if they do know they know very limitedly I'm like this is extremely parasocial this is like beyond parasocial yeah, at this point too much yep tomatoes in the chat or uh, if you have it stinky dramatic. stinky baloney in the chat stinky. meet Tim and Catherine Ballard a couple united Oof, I I... not only by love and family, but also by a profound commitment to God and this to is... a humanitarian cause. Is that the son that he took to the strip club, or is that a different one? Uh, is that the oldest one? But also by a profound commitment that to one? God I don't know. and to a humanitarian cause. Their remarkable journey, though not scripted for cinema, became the inspiration behind... Okay. Literally, literally, he made a movie about himself starring Jim Caviezel. I don't know. Not scripted, scripted for cinema. Are we being for real right now? And why are we this script to me sounds like they ran it through Grammarly or AI and said, make this sound more sophisticated. Cinema? Bro. <laughs> Just say movie. Or the I have silver two screen degrees. if you want to sound two Hollywood. I have degrees. I have a bachelor's degree and a master's degree. And I don't even say, I go to the cinema. Like, what? Let's go down to the cinema and we, <laughs> we could pop by the pub first. Like, okay. Find the acclaimed film. Sound of, freedom. Sound of freedom. Sound of freedom. Sound of freedom. The film based on the life of Tim Ballard. He's also a former deputy uh, department of Homeland Security agent. And Tim's Allegedly. live with us in studio. So Touching welcome. hearts. Both nationally and Ew. internationally. Just a random man like crying. Like, Tim Ballard. <laughs> Ballard's path shifted dramatically from government service to a bold and relentless fight against child trafficking. Catherine, his equal in strength and resolve, stands as a pillar of support. Yeah, I'd need a whole lot of strength and resolve to deal with him too. <laughs> I wonder if she, he's like, Catherine, Catherine, <laughs> I got to go to the strip club to prep. There wasn't ever a moment where we said, let's dedicate our lives to humanitarian causes. Dial Whoa. down the music, dial up her oh, voice. What audio, are we doing? Bro. It just happened. You know, we never foresaw us taking on this role we'll just of, cut the music. of being Jesus. a big voice for human trafficking. That that wasn't what. They're throwing we a birthday for the human traffickers. <laughs> this is such a non-starter because everybody says this. Anybody who has any kind of platform, like I'm trying to look at this through like a PR lens. Anybody who has a platform says it. We never thought it would become this. We say that all the time when people interview us about shit. We never thought we would be doing this. I never thought we would have a platform. I never thought we would be here. Like, I never thought we would be so successful. This is like a non-starter. Tell me something interesting. Right. The, the interesting would be, yeah, I understand that there is, like, credible accusations against my husband of him assaulting women. But have we considered that perhaps maybe he didn't do that? 
Also, somebody notably pointed out, Maxi pointed out in the chat, a voice for human trafficking or against <laughs> human trafficking. That is an important point. Well, I mean, considering... I know what she meant, but he should have edited that. Considering the allegations that are against him, yep. it, it, does mean, it does fit. Like it does four. fit. Balancing the demands of aiding Tim's missions with the care of their nine children. Their family is unique, including two children whom Tim personally rescued during a daring operation in Haiti. That is also a red flag. I didn't know that. Each prior. You didn't know that? I didn't know that one of them was a rescue. That's like a Allegedly. huge con That's a huge conflict of interest. That's that's bad. I mean, I'm all for kids being with families who love them and support them, but this is kind of crazy. Huge conflict. But it also, this is a PR like Caroline it just is like out. A another PR, PR move thing. of like the classic white savior moment of the white guy holding the black kid. You know. Anyway, here's a man crying. ...of their life together speaks volumes of their extraordinary commitment and love. I had to That's leave the house, great. right? Yeah. <laughs> In their Adopt kids and love them. I don't know what this has to do with anything. That's great that you love your kids. I love that for you. Okay, let's move along now. A united front, they established Operation Underground Railroad, shining a light of hope in the darkest corners of human trafficking. Their mission is clear, to dismantle the chains of child exploitation, not just in the U.S. They've done jumps everywhere throughout the world, rescued kids, and then helped them get to a safe place with their aftercare programs. The impact of their work resonates far and wide, celebrated by communities, acclaimed in the media, and supported by a global network of allies. The Ballards, along with their brave part- Yeah, the police. So do with that what you will have transformed personal sacrifice into a worldwide crusade. So I have a project that's under Operation Underground Railroad called Children Need Families. Primarily what we do is fund adoptions or offer grants. Liberating over 7,000 women and children from the grips of trafficking. Yet, at this apex of their endeavors... What they is this just mumbling in the background talking about? Children in Ukraine. Why, why are we talking over that? Confront an unexpected and daunting challenge. This new battle poses a threat, not only to their life's work, but also to the very essence of their family unit. In this critical moment, a pivotal question looms. I also love the framing of this as like, this is Tim's- Will we, their community the of supporters, oh, sorry. stand by- them oh as gosh, steadfastly the as they have stood for the voiceless and vulnerable. Okay. I like how they're framing this as, oh, this is this is Tim and Catherine's life work, and detractors are trying to destroy this wonderful work that Tim and whoever and his wife are doing. Why does he have to be the one to do it? Why? Why can home. somebody? No, like, why can't somebody continue to do this quote-unquote work? Because I'm still not convinced. And Tim, Tim has to be the one who does it or else it all crumbles. Like, is that not a red flag that if he's not at the helm, it's not going to happen? Like, maybe well, your organization was set up rather poorly if when you get ousted, it can't operate anymore. Well, and if this is a lot of, like, I, Kay and I are of the position that stay-at-home moms are working moms, and so if Tim is gone a lot of the time, she has this many kids yeah. that she's caring for. That's a lot of work. But given the checks that they've been receiving from OUR, I bet they've got somebody to help them. That's just conjecture. I would conjecture. Hope so. That's a lot to do on your own. You know, usually... I'm all for people getting help. White upper, upper middle class. That's usually the tap that's getting taken. Or they're just taking care of each other, which is also a common thing. In the wake of triumph often comes trial. Yeah, he left OUR. I don't know if they asked him to leave or if it was... I'm pretty sure they asked him. I don't think they've ever cleared that up, have they? I don't know. I don't remember. It was about a year ago now, and then... Nothing really happened. He had his little victory lap well, with Sound of Freedom the, in the summer. And then the HR, allegedly the HR department at OUR 
went after him because women came forward with these claims. And so I assume that he saving face got was under fire and did the you can't fire me, I quit thing. So Yeah, it could be. The very success that brought their noble cause to light has cast an unforeseen shadow over their lives. Just after Tim suggested he may run for the U.S. Senate, a group of women have come forward with grave allegations against the Ballard. For the woman accusing Ballard spoke publicly alleging sexual These assault. These accusations and have not only stunned their supporters, but have also ignited a media firestorm. It should with good if you fucking sexually reason. assault someone or sexually harass someone, you are accountable for your actions. I don't care if Jesus himself is harassing women. You are accountable for your dumbass actions. Pick a better hero. I'm sorry that Tim failed y'all, but he's inappropriate with women and that is not Mormonism. Like that is not part of Mormon standards yeah. to be inappropriate with women. So if you want to talk about what Mormonism is and isn't, this guy is not your man. Yeah. This is not a representation at, at of At least Mormonism. outwardly, because inwardly there is a lot of subjugation oh, of women. But like blatant crimes of sexual nature is like And we've read them, so I know that are they out are. in the public because when they're under wraps, it's all good. We just cover it up or whatever. But as soon as it's getting into the media, then they're not about that. Discredit. The charges are severe, threatening not just the reputation of the Ballard family, but their entire livelihood. Tim Wham. and Cap Or or and you could you Wham. could uh just consider this for a moment. For your consideration, Tim could get a fucking job and then they would be fine. Catherine, once hailed as heroes, now find themselves in the eye of a legal and public relations hurricane. The irony is bitter. A family that has fought tirelessly against abuse and exploitation now stands accused of the very acts they've dedicated their lives to eradicating. It was the largest. It is quite ironic, isn't it? It's really, truly unfortunate. But just because it's ironic doesn't mean it's not true. On God. It's like, um, and it's funny too, because they're alleging that this is like destroying their family and everything like that. The only person this should be destroying is Tim because he deserves it. Yep. And he is the one who's done this. The, the family is totally victimless. Allegedly. They they, they should not be made here. victims. Um. Anyway, I feel allegedly, bad for his wife if she I feel bad know. for her. Yeah, if she didn't know, it sucks. Obviously, there is some criticism. Like, how could you not know that your husband seems to but have he also were, some was issues? Telling operatives and stuff like you know, yeah. we have to get a burner phone, and I told Julie this or yeah. whatever her name is, Catherine. But anyway, I'll oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. But anyway. The only people who are making the family also like a tacit victim in this is people like this who are like, this is a family affair and blah, blah, blah. Wow. Their kids didn't do this. Yeah. Well, his son did, I guess. It, he, well, he didn't I really get an option. However, yeah. By his own. I'm father. not, I'm holding his son blameless, but it's just crazy. Welcome to, ugh. Diamond Day. <laughs> Child rescue that I've ever heard of. We, we rescued of over 120 outer victims. The legal battle looms large with mounting costs that threaten to bankrupt the family. Wow. Every dollar. Wow. I've seen your paycheck. I've seen your paychecks, Tim. I don't feel bad for Consequences you. of my actions chasing, chasing me, me right, right now. now. And I wonder how much he made from the movie. Oh, like 100%. These people are not like your average middle class one paycheck away from being destitute this is like cost playing poverty here these people aren't unless he's like dumped all their money into some shit or is like you know doing something he shouldn't be doing with their money they get paid plenty yeah spent in courtrooms is a dollar taken away from their mission of rescue and rehabilitation that's a pr move right here absolutely because the you're taking away from the children the by doing this and the financial portion of it should not be in any way shape or form connected directly to Tim it should be in the 501c3s that they have anything that's going on with Tim it, like it's not his own money that he's in here putting in it's money from donors and all this shit so it's really goofy point potential financial ruin is not just a personal catastrophe for the Ballards it's a direct hit to the heart of their life-saving operations 
it should not be. Who do this. If you have a 501c3 and you operate it like this, you should be going to prison for fraud. Right. <laughs> I mean, just on point. And the, they are not the only people who run anti-trafficking organizations. And there are people who do it with more transparency and more effectiveness than what we're yeah. seeing that's coming out right now of him not even allegedly rescuing like anyone like and people who are qualified to do so there are nonprofits. other the ballard family is not the heart of anti-trafficking i know that it <laughs> seems that way like if you live in utah or if you're mormon but truly they're not truly they're not truly. so if you want to support this cause there are plenty of other ways to do so they act like we're just going to allow continue, like children to be continued to be trafficked if Tim yeah. and Catherine stop doing this. Well, you also have to call into question their their claims of how often it's happening and everything because, I mean, they say that it happens so often every single year in the United States. But I, I mean, personally, I always ask people, how many children do you know that have been abducted and trafficked? It doesn't not happen, but it is It not doesn't not as, happen. Like extreme as people make it out to be yeah because they're i mean i've seen claims of like hundreds of thousands of children every single year oh yeah Which at that rate substantiated in anyone. a country in a country of 300 million i feel like you would at least know one well and he or said know of one. this is not to make light of trafficking because it's a problem but it's the only way that he makes money the only way that these nonprofits can function is and this is not like a shady thing necessarily this is pr from like a nonprofit standpoint, like this has to be in your backyard because if it feels like it's in yeah. your backyard, then it feels Mounting, more urgent. Yeah. Like it feels like, oh my gosh, this is happening all around me right now. And it's nice with trafficking because trafficking statistics are so wonky that I can just be like, yeah, yeah it happens all the time and nobody's going to think twice. Well, and then it, it's also the, we need to protect the children. So it's information that you can't verify. And because it's also, I don't want to be out there putting on blast children who have been saved saved from trafficking. I think that information should be private. Indeed. However, it does create a vacuum of information where you can just make claims that are unverifiable. And it also takes away from a really important conversation, which is most children who are abused are abused by someone they know, including family. Yeah. And so it's taking away from that conversation because we have this like theoretical yeah. bad guy who's like coming in and abducting children when in reality, these are the people that are in the pews on Sunday. Yeah. It's a family member that takes them when they weren't supposed to have custody and flees the state and stuff like that. It's that's generally what we're seeing here in the United States. Go. As the Ballards navigate these troubled waters, the question remains, will justice prevail? Or will I accusations sure so. drown out years of selfless service? My husband has. Does it cancel it out though? Like this is the, this like as a therapist, I see this as like very just inappropriate logic because I don't argue that Tim has maybe done some good things with his career. Like I'm sure there are I, some good I feel things. like maybe to have get gotten things started, he would have had to. Exactly. So I'm not gonna disregard that everything that Tim has done is bad. Because that's extreme thinking. This is very black and white. This is to say that just because Tim has accusations that he's never done anything good ever. And that's not what we're trying to say here. Because that just discards the whole argument. Because then people are like, because people can't compute a person having done bad things and good things also. Like that's really hard to hold both of those things at yeah. the same time. So this isn't to discredit that Tim has never done a like selfless action in his life. Yeah. But he can still well, be accountable. And, I mean, it's just life. Like most things in life are not categorically good or categorically evil. But this is how they yeah. make you sucked into this but, because yeah, you feel compelled. It's how you play off of those traits. Just this light, he's able to see good in the world, you know, and he has a lot of optimism, a lot of strength. I didn't want to see that taken away. I didn't. Oh, we got evidence. Let's go. Evidence could flip the current narrative on its head. Okay. Some accusers sure. who worked undercover assumed the roles of wives or girlfriends to Ballard and other operatives during missions. In technical terms, this is called cover for status. As an undercover couple, they could go into strip clubs, bars, dirty spas, and to places where child traffickers do business and block for each other so neither would be expected to engage in sex with children or adults. 
Can we get that blown up and thrown on our fucking wall? Right Why does he look like John Bon Jovi got stung by a fucking stingray in the face? I don't buy that he does this to maintain what is this? his like privacy and confidentiality because his face is plastered fucking everywhere. There is in Congress, on TV, on the no news, mistaking. in the media, on podcasts. There is he does not make any effort to disguise who he is. And so why are you going into this looking like this? Seriously? Like you look like a like washed up dog the bounty hunter. And dog the bounty hunter <laughs> already doesn't look good. So like, what are we doing? Like, Sorry, to me, dog this is like, I just want to play a role. Like, I just want to, I want to get the tattoos. I want to play the bad guy, which is like fine, but you don't have to like pretend that you're rescuing children in order to do that. Although, so this is the fakest looking tattoo I've ever seen honestly, in my entire honestly. life. There's no way they're passing this it off as like real. It looks like Kid Rock. Is that supposed to be Mickey Rourke? <laughs> Let's get a kitty palette cleanser in here real Dog quick. Dog from Wish. Will you uh, move out of the way for just a second? Yeah. There. Can you see them on here. this side? Come over toward me. <clears throat> Let me zoom. Hold on. We're zooming. Baloney in a... What was that word? Oh, baloney. Baloney in a box. Baloney in a box in a... Baloney's like, hey, what's going on over here? <laughs> I feel like I need to be included now. Okay, let's go. We're going back. You go back to your box. Wish Dog the Bounty Hunter. Oh, whoa. I need to get rid of that one. Anyway, so, yeah, this cover is not convincing. Also, do we not think that maybe um, if people are, like, serial traffickers or whatever, they're not reading up on who their boogeyman is supposed to be? Yeah, because he's supposedly out here in the trenches. He's going and rescuing these children and he's all over the goddamn news. Real operation. Uh, all it takes. All it takes is like you just search anti-trafficking organization and his face is going to pop up. Do you think they would not be familiarizing themselves with that face so that they don't get caught in a sting like this? Like this is just ridiculous. Also, cover for status don't you think you would want trained people in this situation, Not especially ones who can, like, when you just look at it for more than a second and you, you know, take yourself away from the situation, I don't know how they would be running these really high, um, like, dangerous operations and be so flippant with operational security. It's Yeah, it just doesn't compute. It does not make any sense. Math ain't mapping. Sex workers. Once people are being trafficked, they're being enslaved. There's really only one way to get them out. You have to go into that black market and filtrate it because otherwise you're not gonna know what's happening and no one's gonna know what's happening. The undercover piece is that important. We look for people who have the law enforcement, military skills, but even the more important skill is actors. You've got to be able to play the role that we need you to play. Whatever. Yeah, but, but I don't if, think any of these women were actors. If you get, I don't think so. No, maybe. Maybe some influencing. But you don't want an act. Ultimately, when you get burned, do you want an actor? Actor who is going to weigh you down in a situation where you might have to kill or be killed. Well, and mind you. Or do you want somebody who can defend themselves? Mind you, they all like in. Um, journalism about a woman who went on an operation with him. She talked about how the majority of the people that were on the operation did not have any tactical training or background. Which blows my mind. Which is crazy because you're just je like if you're actually doing this like you say you are, you're jeopardizing the lives of these people. Yeah, and yourself. And yourself. To be honest. Or that might be to infiltrate. I was approached I think, by... I think he's saying infiltrate but he says it like with the emphasis on the I. Infiltrate, or no, Infiltrate. the second eye. A friend, there was a search for the Ukrainian people, women who can support operation. They, of course, know that since six, six years old, I was performed a lot as an actress. Then in Amsterdam, I also took some courses and performed here as well. They asked me if I would like to, to be a part of it. And I work with Tim Ballard in a few undercover operations, one of them were in Mexico, uh, where we helped to arrest a pedophile who was quite local of his sexual preferences. In that operation, I played a teenager 
and uh, I was completely safe, I felt. This is the classic, because it didn't happen to these women, we can discredit yeah. the other women. This is any time like sexual classic. assault cases and things like this come up, this is always the PR move. Look at how many women who have worked with him who didn't have this experience because they're hoping to discredit what these other women are saying so it doesn't seem as believable but you and i know that just because it didn't happen to these women doesn't mean that it didn't happen to yeah. the women who have come forward well and statistically speaking it's not going to happen to the most of them because that's the easiest way to get caught right <laughs> you have to have your alibi you know you space it out or whatever Safe. Uh, even though we were about to meet the our target i felt guarded i felt that um yeah uh, I'm in a safe space. The, I was treated well. I had my own uh, hotel room. Again, uh, I... Notice how she hits on all of the things that the um, the women in the lawsuit specifically mention. Including So saying, she was coached on saying all this shit. Absolutely. Inclu and this, if this is her experience, that's completely valid. But we also know that in the women that are involved in these lawsuits have come forward and said that Tim wanted the couple's ruse to go on before they were ever like literally in the like trafficking situation yeah. which maybe you can make an argument for that but needing to stay in the same hotel room and then talking inappropriately about what you two can do while you're in the yeah. hotel room like while you're at the place like that's not necessary it's not sorry buddy if if you have to be method acting in order to make it believable you're not a good actor you probably should not be the one who's in the hot seat try again sorry if you have to literally become that person, I saw a TikTok about that recently. I was like, you know, that's a really good point. <laughs> if you have to method act just to be able to make the character come through, so maybe you're, not, you're not, you're probably not that great. Sorry. I believe that that operation was extremely successful and was great to be in, in, in such place to see that we actually can make a difference and save children's lives while maintaining a credible cover to be in these trafficking dents and rescue children. Some of those suing participated in real life rescue operations. Tim and the entire operation oh did such a great- Oh my God. <laughs> what? Okay, what trafficker? This is not to make fun of anybody's tattoos, but what trafficker is gonna think that what he has on his oh, arm yeah, right this is here so cool. is masculine? I'm sorry, that's not giving like, ooh, big bad boy. Yeah, I've got the f word in spanish tattooed on my uh my oh fucking my pelvis bro yeah. this is unhinged. Bad cereal <laughs> also this is like <laughs> the most obvious wig i've, I've ever, ever seen. seen it's giving baby's first there tattoo no. it's giving fine line tattoos that people get in utah from like hair stylists self-report <laughs> yeah uh, trying to lure him out using different techniques and tools to the point where he just couldn't say no. We devised this plan that Tim and I were business partners and my like character was in the process of trafficking young girls and looking to get into children. Why are they only like her face is partially blurred but other people are like full yeah. blurred and Once. one guy's in the dark. Can we get a little bit of consistency? Consistency here. You know, product it adds to the production value if we're doing the same thing for everybody. from Ukraine. Hey there, my name is I have been an undercover operator with OUR for over a year. I worked on various missions with Tim Ballard specifically, ranging from different countries, different continents. And during my time working with Tim, there has been zero inappropriate behavior, any sexual contact, Great, any inappropriate sexual contact whatsoever. Before That's the way it should be. So stop using this as a way to detract from the other women. And just go, yeah, she shouldn't have to be in an environment where she yeah. gets sexually assaulted when she's doing work. This should be the bare ass minimum. But again, this does not mean that the other women were not assaulted. This just means he did not assault this woman. Allegedly. Allegedly. Even. Maybe and he maybe did. she doesn't feel comfortable enough to come forward because who would want to? He's Tim yeah. freaking Ballard. I mean, we, we even saw in those pages of pages and pages of text messages between him and one of the plaintiffs that i mean he was saying like they're gonna come after us they're gonna want to have our head on a pike we 
will be like forever bound to each other in secret because of what we're because about of to what do. what we have on each other. So how do we know that that's not him flexing that kind of thing over the other women? And I'm not going Absolutely. to say that that's definitely what's happening here, but it's you can't rule it out. I mean. Or during or after a mission. Everything and was we have no way of verifying if these women actually went on missions or not. This could be people no clue. like friends of his. These could be church members. Like, it's really not that complicated to just grab somebody and say, hey, these people are lying about me. You love me and love what I do. Will you say this? And I'm not discrediting her in yeah. any way, but I'm just saying that we don't have any verifiable to this either, you know? Maybe they'll send something. That last woman did look like she was at least on set or on scene, whatever. Yeah, and I mean, it's just an argument. Yeah. Very um, respectful, very professional. In fact, I think the OUR team went above and beyond to make sure the safety of both the operators and the victims and anybody involved in a mission. Great. During my time in our different missions, we had to deploy different tactics depending on the scenarios, one of which was the couples rouge. Um, which involved us. I don't know. It sounded like he was doing the couples ruse every single fucking mission from I'm calling the, the way that he's now. the couples rouge. A little rouge on your face. Yeah. Anyway. During those missions specifically, there was again absolutely zero sexual contact, touching, anything inappropriate. So, how did you con uh, convince the traffickers that you were a couple? Right, so like, why is your experience different? Then, yeah. so like, why did it? If it this sounds works, like his couple's ruse is not then very he's just consistent. Telling on himself because he doesn't need to go the extra mile that he went with these women that was inappropriate when these women are saying like we did it without any touching and it was fine. Yeah. So hello, self-report. Of that nature, everything was very much professional and respectful through and through from start to finish. Where children were saved and traffickers taken down by using this cover for status tactic. None of them made a single complaint, not until later. In some cases... Ah, uh, yes, the police oh, in other yeah. con countries always been like a bastion of trustworthiness and definitely Again. no corruption, ever. Again. Here is another PR tactic that they use in these kinds of cases, not just Tim's, where they say because women took forever to come forward that their claims are not factual. Because they took a long time to come forward. Do you know why they take a long time to come forward? Because you. Because you do shit like this. And you call them liars. And you discredit them. Because it because is not Because you want to protect your man. It is not a safe culture for women to come forward and call people out. Especially people in the public eye. And people like Tim Ballard. Who may have manipulated them and threatened them. In situations like this where he's talking to these other women and is like, we've got so much dirt on each other that we'd take each other down if any if either of us came forward. Like, he's setting these women up so that they don't. There is strength in numbers. And so, like, we saw this, we see this with many cases where women don't feel comfortable coming forward. And once people yeah. start speaking out, there's more safety in numbers and people feel more comfortable. But just because they didn't come out and say these things till later doesn't mean it didn't happen. This is classic misogyny. This is classic patriarchy. This is classic, like, anti-woke feminism. This idea that if women didn't come forward immediately after it happened, then it didn't happen. Yeah. Like, how many rape kits do we have sitting places that haven't even been processed? We have backlogs useless. that are decades long. We do not handle this as a country the way that we should. And the average number of people who come forward with false claims is minute compared to the amount of women who have actually experienced these things. So we have to stop with this narrative, and I see exactly what you're doing, and you need to fucking stop. Preach, Jordan. I appreciate it. Are we keen to moving on? Yes. Let me back it up so we can catch what you're saying. None of them made a single complaint, not until later. In some cases, years later. If you were being assaulted, why did you keep going back? Um... Because she was being manipulated and coerced. Right. Hello? Let, let's apply this same logic to Tim's work. Oh, you're being trafficked? Why didn't you tell the police? Why didn't you tell anybody? This logic is disgusting. No one likes a mad woman. Was it only after this? Oh my God, they, eat, they cut out her response. They just were like, oh yeah, this is our perfect shot. 
We're going to sit on her while she's silent for they five to ask that question. seconds. Because and the reason she's probably fucking exasperated is because all these women sit there and they know that they're going to get shit like this. And it is so exhausting as a woman to sit here and have to be like, really, guys? How many women does this have to happen to where we all sit here and go, why did you take so long to come forward, huh? Or why did you keep going back? Like, that's a horrible thing to ask somebody when they're being abused, coerced, and manipulated. Because just because these women are adults doesn't mean that they weren't being manipulated by Tim. Yeah. They were, I am much more willing to stay in something when I feel like I'm contributing, I'm making a difference. Like, he created the perfect toxic scenario where it's like, well, I can suffer through Tim's bullshit because I know what I'm doing is important and it matters and we're saving children. Like, what a better scenario to put a woman in to think that, oh, if you abandon this operation, you jeopardize the operation. These children are going to continue to be trafficked. The stakes have never been higher for a woman in this kind yeah. of position. He has created the perfect toxic dynamic to keep women coming back. And you saw it in those text messages that we read. Anytime she, like, anytime she would start to hesitate, Tim would panic. You're not thinking about going back, are you? Oh, yeah. That's like, a huge red flag. I didn't even notice. Every time. And he would just keep poking, keep poking, keep poking. He would always come back to the, the sexual conversation to make sure that they were still engaged in that manner. And, I mean, they were open to something, and they thought that this man who idolized them in, especially in one of the defend or the plaintiff's cases, she thought this man. I am super, super. Uh, and I trust whatever he's done because I know that he's done tons of good things. I'm in a shitty uh, place in my marriage or whatever, and I'm just gonna go for the ride, whatever. But that is no excuse. There is absolutely no excuse to be able to take a situation like that and take advantage of it the mormon angle here t froggy just brought this up in the comments and it's a really fair point the mormon angle here is important because women in mormonism are constantly taught that if men falter if men slip yeah. it's your fault and especially so sexually in these couples situations are like well i must have been doing something then to warrant this behavior and this is common not just in mormonism yeah. this is kind of religions across the board but like i said it's kind of disgusting how perfectly toxic and manipulative this environment is that tim has created like it's almost like fail proof for forcing women into a position that they feel obligated to be in and just because you can walk away in any moment doesn't mean that there aren't social consequences for doing so because women don't want to come forward because of the conversation that's going on right now because of the men who are calling them out on twitter and lying because of the women yeah who are calling them out and saying that they're full of shit because Tim Ballard is a great person. He couldn't have possibly ever done this. And this is all a another PR move is this is all like big woke media. This is all yeah. the left. Like this is all, I know that these women came forward and it validates that Tim is doing the right thing even more because they're coming after him. Like 100%. this is the narrative that continues to be perpetuated. They, they have such a wealth of things that they can play off of because it plays into the idea that with the political stuff, oh, the left, there are, it's just a cabal of evil, um, you know, redacted stuff that I'm not going to say because it's, it's awful. And they can play off that. Oh, the left is, they hate children. They want to mutilate children and transify them or all this, whatever. So they have a huge pool to pull from on that situation and, and all of that. Because ultimately, what Tim is still trying to pursue is that political influence that he wanted right before all this shit hit the fan well quack and so, cut just brought up a really good point too that taught like the idea of consent consent is not something that's taught in mormonism no it's not it's so not. these women are potentially married or not already conditioned that to like horrible mormon men behavior which is they're entitled to touch you they can touch you whenever they want however they want it doesn't matter if you're into it or not you're obligated because of your role as a woman and so and women aren't taught that they can speak up because of everything that happens within Mormonism, right? And so we have, like, the perfect storm of things to keep women exactly where they are. Don't speak up. Don't advocate for yourself. Like, it's just mind-boggling and so, like, disgusting to me how he created this situation. Anyway, shout out to all my people who were transified from birth in the chat. Love ya. 
and thanks for uh, notifying me that I had the click to exit full screen. It was just really white, and it washed us out really bad, so <laughs> I took it off. Anyway, love ya. No homo. Success of sound of freedom that they somehow became victims? Even though they showed up multiple times for training and or operations well after the alleged abuse took place, this is awful. I fucking hate this. Wow. We're just like, <laughs> let's take everything that they've ever done to discredit women when they come forward and let's throw it at the wall they, and hope these, something sticks. These women are just pissed that they didn't get to be movie stars. You here to hear, folks. It's because ridiculous. It couldn't be bad. And then they continue to go back. Like, people can't fathom that because they can't fathom abuse. They can't fathom grooming. Like, the right is all like fixated on right. grooming but when we have actual aspects of this happening in this case where he's talking about the couple's ruse and he's teaching these women that it has to be this way and these are all examples of grooming this is grooming and it can happen to adults it can happen to women because women hold especially in mormonism hold men in high esteem tim has the priesthood tim isn't gonna lead me wrong i trust him like because he's mormon we have this like inherent like Mormon equals trustworthy thing also going on. And so also, is it safe? Like, is it safe for me to stop going back? Is he going to start harassing yeah. me? Is he going to show up at my house? Is he going to keep calling me? Is he going to tell someone like there are high, high stakes for these women coming forward and you guys just continue to discredit, 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 discredit. And all yeah. it is, is, is telling on yourself. Well, here's the, the more telling on yourself part that I noticed. Let's go back here. They're essentially alleging, oh, these ladies, they wanted a slice of the pie. Whoa, it, they did so good over here, right? But at the same time, Tim is on the brink of financial ruin. Additionally, hello, can he we wasn't even paying be his consistent? Assistant. Remember? <sighs> that came I out in the lawsuit. That. One of these women was like his assistant and was responsible for helping to get him to events and things. And part of their argument was it was contributing to her personal financial ruin because he wasn't paying her. Oops. So don't tell me this is about the money. Oops. It's not the money. Also, shout out Percival P. Can I call you Percy? Percival P. Starting on your transified by the left journey on HRT. Let's go. W. Sound of freedom that they somehow became victims. And Even happy birthday. they showed up shout multiple out. times for training and or operations New well after the alleged abuse took place. Consider the case of one accuser on July 20, 2023. Oh, one of the former operator turned plaintiffs confessed to a colleague the following. I want to point out something here real quick. Let's go. All of these are very conventionally pretty, attractive women. And that no matters doubt. in a case like this. No doubt. It matters. HRTW. It's bad at, no matter who it happens to, right? But Tim clearly looking at these women has a type. They all vaguely look like his wife. A little bit. If you squint on all of them, any of them could be his wife. And it doesn't matter, but there is something to be said for these are conventionally pretty women and how that contributes to a case like this. Ooh, Caroline with another another W. Accuser? Uh, victim. <laughs> yep. In a text message, I'm love with my boss, who is married. <laughs> I like how she just read it the way it's what does this what is this this looks like this doesn't even look like a text why did they frame it this way this looks like a freaking card game from like um what's that card game that we have oh the stupid uh what's cards, it called? Against, cards humanity. against humanity it looks like a cards against humanity card what are we doing just read it as it's written should we go and cross reference and see why they decided to blur this out also i'm love with my boss i'm love with my boss who is married most popular guy in the world. How did that happen? Did that happen? Let me tell you how that happened. He put oh. you in these positions and oh, the couples but with you. Let me blur out this bit so I can control the narrative. Mm, I think yeah, we need this say? I think we need to investigate what that says there. I don't know where that is because I don't remember those text messages from the case itself. From you don't remember before. that one? No, I don't. Does anybody else remember these messages? Cause I think she was like talking rhetorically. Maybe. I don't know. If anybody, uh, Keep going. If anybody we'll remembers. How did that happen? She also texted, Why does everyone put Catherine on a freaking pedestal? 
She's not perfect. I'm not jealous. It's just annoying just as shit. Just read the script, damn it. She gives up so much blah, blah, blah. It okay, I don't remember reading to that. to discredit her again by saying that she's hateful towards Catherine. Yeah, like, if I'm in love with somebody and they've put me in this position where we're engaging in a sexual manner and there is emotional attraction and there is an emotional and albeit probably physical affair happening, I'm probably not going to feel good about his wife. Yeah. But I, who put her in that position, Tim? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that is one of the outcomes of grooming. <laughs> and I don't see anywhere in those text messages that I read from the case itself that we pulled from the literal reporter where you're in there defending your wife. Yeah, what's out it? there? Where is your text messages with this woman when it gets inappropriate saying, oh, I shouldn't be talking about this. I'm married. No, instead, you're going, send me pics. Send me pics. I want to see the, the lingerie you bought. So I don't buy this at all. Are you doing dirty things right now? Yep. Is it a coincidence she you. sued? It's, it, I hated those texts. It's, it was always like giving, uh, oh, you're in the shower without me? Yeah, like, literally. Oh, God, it's the dude. cringiest thing I've ever heard. Dude, Catherine for sexual assault while providing no evidence of how she could have done anything like that? The lawsuit states that Catherine is promoting a false narrative against the alleged victims, saying they're coming forward because Tim is a public figure. Now you. Don't you think. I feel bad for Catherine. I do. Nobody wants to be in this position where no. not only is your husband Tim, but your husband is doing this and he's getting outed on national television, in the media. It's everywhere. It's all over yeah. the news. People are going to look at you differently your in church. Your own church is distinct, distancing itself from your husband. Allegedly. Your eternal companion. Yes. Yeah. Like, I feel bad for her in that sense because she didn't sign up for this. And she might feel obligated to say she might... Ob she might still love him and want to stay. She might be in complete denial. It doesn't matter. But I, I mean, it, no matter what, I feel bad for her. It sucks. But your husband is engaging in these emotional and physical affairs. Yeah. And so to place blame on these women is misplaced anger. It is Catherine patriarchy Bell. in perfect form right here. You are being personally sued by these women. And um, that was a surprise. I haven't met most of these women also uh <laughs> do you think there's a fucking reason for that or not <laughs> right right hello like hello these text messages come to my office send me pics like dude come on and the ones that i have met well have i only met one well notice how she acts it's not true i don't i don't even know these women i didn't know any of them just because you don't know them doesn't mean that nothing happened I, 100%. You know. Do you think he would, like, maybe some people would make Dude, them he's... familiar as, like, a tactic, but that's going to, I mean, that doesn't work for him. No. Because he can just say it's for work. These women are for work. It's for the couple's ruse. It's like yeah. he has the perfect cover. Those also weren't real photos I think it of would text be... on a phone. Yeah. No, yeah, no. Those were not screenshots. So we, we don't We're know ever where those came from. Actually. One plaintiff who accused Tim of coercing her into compromising situations was actually the architect. I love how it, it's like <laughs> the on-screen stuff. It's like, and with the cadence of the narration and everything, it sounds like a sexual harassment seminar that you'd have to do out on the computer at work. Literally. <laughs> Consider the case, number well, two. Well, think about what they're about to say here. They're saying that she's actually the architect, which is going to really piss me off. Of her own undercover strategy. She claims Tim forced her to take sexy pictures. The truth... Did we read the same fucking... <laughs> you didn't read the text messages that I did. And they're not Phone like records? fake because they're literally from the reporter, but those are the woke mob text messages. So. Oh, I guess so. They're, they're riddled with wokeness. And this just pushes the narrative that women... This is embarrassing for Tim because this is the least masculine narrative possible. This is 100% proof of the men cannot handle themselves around women because she comes close to me with her sexy pics and her boobs and suddenly uh, i'm rendered uncontrollable i can't control myself i have the c word tattooed above my penis like this doesn't just come out of you dude like you play as much a role in this as they do and if they are sexually and physically and emotionally attracted to you then that's completely fair but you are a married man dude like it's your job to be like nope shut that shit down i didn't see you 
anywhere shutting that down in those text messages. You were, give me more. I want to see. Let me wax you. This turned me on. I'm yeah. thinking about you in my oh, dreams. Oh, is this the first time you've gotten a Brazilian? Yeah. Wow, you must be very smooth. And... Let me wax you next time. Like, yeah. This Come is not on. the text of a married man, dude. So stop trying to play that. Yeah. Jordan, that's just woke garbage it's you're talking. It's woke garbage, I woke guess. Woke garbage. Uh, Butter Brican trying to control F the court documents, but you can't because they're just images. Oh, yeah, sorry. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's fair. nobody, nobody do too much because that set that one where she's complaining about Catherine allegedly uh, was definitely not in. I would have remembered that one, so I don't think the other alleged. And even one is if there. they did, does that discredit the fact that he sexually? harassed or assaulted no it doesn't them, matter was inappropriate it doesn't matter if they were in love with him just because this is perfect mormon mentality in in fine print right here is they're in love with me so whatever i do is fine like yeah. i am not accountable for that's my enough actions that's enough consent for me. me yep that's that's enough like that's perfect example in her own words written on a text message to a colleague she said the girl trafficking the girls was via escorts, so I got infiltrated through escorting a fake website we made. I had to take boudoir photos. The pictures are only on my burner. The only reason they need a burner is because of Tim. It's not for the operative. It's not jeopardizing the operation. Yeah. It's who, about Tim. Who was the one that said, that said that she needed a burner? That was Tim. Literally Tim. He said, I will get it for you. I was not naked. My husband knew I did it at the time even. Text that messages. What does that prove? Between this operator and those helping her show how proactive she was without Ballard participation. So what does that mean? Oh my God. Again, so she was actively participating, which means she couldn't have been being assaulted because she's involved in something that's bigger than herself. Okay. And she wants to do good. She wants, she feels like she's helping these kids. That doesn't mean that Tim wasn't simultaneously being inappropriate. Like, those two ideas don't cancel each other out. Yeah. Like, just because she was involved, like, this is exactly how you guys view, view them. Because your narrative is that they are doing this to take Tim down. This disproves your narrative. This disproves your own narrative. They're yeah. doing this because they were involved and they wanted these children to be safe and they wanted to do good. So this disproves your own bullshit. She doesn't want to take down this organization. It, yeah, she was like infatuated with all the stuff that she had said. She, I remember her telling him about taking all of her books over to her mom's place, and she's like, "Oh my god, I can't believe I'm involved in this this great work and everything." Like another grooming tactic. Yeah. Um. So that's fun. Th this is also coming from the people who are like, "We're such critical thinkers. We could never be led astray," and. Like, just watching this for a couple minutes, it's like, you did not explore, you just want your boy, you've started from a point where you wanted Tim to be innocent in this, mm -hmm. and you just built backwards. Which is bias. Absolutely no, and we didn't talk about Tim for a long time because... I felt weird about the things that were going on with OUR and how they were under investigation, all this shit. But I didn't want to say things that were going to be iffy or wrong yeah. or anything like that. We just kept our personal opinions to ourselves. We were never fans. Uh, yeah, I was like, this is weird, but, you know, what? okay, whatever. A lot of Mormons seem to like it. I actually, um, when I worked at uh, a tire shop, there was a guy who worked with Tim who would come in and he would, he would talk to me and everything about that. And he was um, in charge of, like, booking flights and all this shit. And, I mean, he came multiple times and so i chatted up with him a bunch so uh, if anything i was predisposed to liking the organization just because i thought the guy was really chipper and cool but you know anyway ironically ballard doesn't recall seeing pictures and did not participate with her on this particular operational trip to mexico i don't remember well, isn't that convenient dude because you got photos between you and this other woman so and you asking for him so this is kind of irrelevant. I don't care how many pictures you exchanged with women. You were being inappropriate, point blank, period. I don't need, like, constant All the evidence other between every bullshit. single woman to line up exactly the same. Because you're not going to use the same thing with every woman. Hello? Hello? The city. 
when she used them. Further complicating the narrative, one accuser's past statements and actions tell a story of respect and trust in Tim Ballard. You're proving my point. <laughs> it's almost like if you love and trust someone that they can't be inappropriate to you. And right. this is Mormon men logic at its finest. As a therapist who works with men and women in Utah, this is pervasive. If I love someone, they do no harm. The intent is always good. And even if they assault me, even if they're inappropriate, even if they push me to do things I don't want to do, yeah, it's fine because I love and trust them and I care about them. The concept of consent here, like this is grooming 101. Like I have trust and like 100% good intention, good faith yeah. belief in a person then I am much more likely to be abused by that person. Yeah. That's why it's people that whole... are more assaulted by members of their family because there is implicit trust in those situations. Is that whole kind of cult of personality trance that people fall into, especially with people like Tim? I mean, he he has those piercing eyes. He directs his attention 100% to people when he talks to them. And you just fall into that idea of, oh, well, if something bad happened, uh, it wasn't his intention and it was it just, you know, things went awry. Uh, if it was his intention, things were taken out of context. Yep. If he things weren't taken hand. out of context, then it was just a fluke. And I mean, it just goes on and on and on. And in all those situations, the women are always at fault. Yeah. You came on to me. You didn't say no. Like women can no longer win in these situations because men never have the bad intentions. They're yeah. always okay. Someone said that the video just description we says they took it upon themselves to make this docu series, so they're for real oh, standing I didn't even... Tim that hard. We really are standing Tim. Oh yeah, there you go. We've taken. It I didn't even look at that. to delve deeper to look beyond the headlines in the court of public opinion. Is this the? Sorry, we'll come okay, right so back. I'm homeless. I live in my car. What? This is not what I thought it was. <laughs> I thought Ballard. it was the... reported sexual misconduct. Oh, why did it lose our spot? I knew it was going to be that. I should have known better. We were before uh, that's then. That's all right. Before then? Yep, we were at Consider oh. Case 2. One accuser's past statements and actions tell a story of respect and trust in Tim Ballard. Just weeks before joining the lawsuit, she wrote passionately in defense of Ballard's character and methods. A stark contrast to her current stance. It's important. I mean, I don't know. I'm beating a dead horse this time. I don't know how many times I can say it. The people who love you are also the people who are most likely to abuse you. That is just truth and fact point. The implicit trust, the established comfortability, like that is used to their advantage. It's how they manipulate you because you have yeah. that already established. And then you feel crazy and then they gaslight you. And I'm the one that's at fault here. I was wearing the scantily clad clothing, even though he was the one that encouraged me to do it and was asking yeah. me for pictures. Like, there is no world in this narrative where Tim can do wrong. Like, you see, there is not a single thing that he has said that Tim could have done better in the situation. And that is a massive red flag when intaking any kind of media, when you cannot speak critically or think critically about the person involved. Yep. Stranger, uh, Julie over here, Stranger Danger program told taught gen xers all the wrong things 100 oh, yeah it's usually the people no who are close that, to you though. no no, no. you don't want to believe that because it is it's facing the awful truth that yeah. the people who are most likely to hurt you are close to you already and we want the figurative we don't want that to be the that's case. more comforting really almost than who is it in my family statistically speaking who is it in my life that i trust like 100 percent Important to note that she wrote this email two weeks after she had resigned amicably from Ballard's employment. The couple. So that means that she couldn't have been assaulted or interacted with inappropriately because she resigned amicably. What is she going to do? Did you want her to like throw shit at him? Did you want her to like attack him? Because then you'd be saying that she's doing it wrong. So which way can she do it that's right in your eyes? Because I have yet to see how they can do this in a way where they'll be believed. And that's exactly the problem. People's ruse is a well thought out process. It comes with training and you have to trust your partner. Traffickers are raping and selling children for sex and are smart. 
You have to be believable. Leading up to an operation, details are being made, including locations, safe houses, prep houses, prep locations, tattoo artists, makeup artists, I can't with those images. I cannot believe they. If those are artists, their art is trash because, I mean, can you imagine going in there and somebody's already got tattoos? These are very obvious tattoos and these ones look brand new. So at best, you could be All like, oh, yeah, I just got 15 tattoos uh, three weeks ago. Uh -huh. <laughs> Camera crew. Wouldn't Flights, that be more sus? Backup operators and so forth. Oh my god, that looks We so also dark. all have burner <laughs> cell phones that we use only on operations. These cell phones also need credibility. So leading up to all operations, we have to preload back and forth to either the couple acting as a couple on the op. See, this is the plaintiff's email referring to Ballard, and this is exactly what I'm talking about. Leading up to all operations, we have to preload back and forth to either the couple acting as a couple on the op or the group going in general. This is exactly the shit that he peddled to them that is manipulative. We have to start acting before we get there. Yeah. We have to act like the couple in text messages. We have to act like the couple at the home or the hotel behind closed doors when no one's around. No, you don't. You want a reason to be inappropriate with these women. So this is an example right here. Yeah. Well, and it seems like they were talking about stuff unrelated to like their characters, quote unquote, on these phones. So how, that doesn't seem safe. Or the anyway. group going in general. The reason is that traffickers have the technology to lift content from your phone to get intel. That's something <laughs> what? These, something these are traffickers them. in developing countries. You think that they, they can just like hack into your fucking phone? Get a better phone! <laughs> God. They also have grabbed phones out of our hands to look at accuracy, text messages, pictures, and flights to assure them we are not cops or undercover operatives. Even if that's the case, just, even you if could that's just how load it all onto it, the phone every single time. I don't hear anywhere in there where you have to be inappropriate. Right? I don't hear anywhere in there. Because even if, like, were together like i don't have to be like rubbing my boobs on mckay all the time to prove to the like general public that we're together it would be preferred but <laughs> like this is not this is 100 percent manipulation that you could kind of see like okay yeah maybe i can see that that he uses to get what he wants he has just framed this all under the narrative of this is for the operative and i think he's done it to this extent so severely baloney dude Hold on, oh allow me God. to fix my. He's done it so severely to this point that I think he truly buys his own shit. I think he's like, he smells what he's stepping in and believes it as fact at this point. Supply. High on his own supply, lost in the sauce. Baloney, why? <laughs> We're getting the stinky emoji. <laughs> stinky indeed. Baloney okay, knocked over the light. Properly. And he's probably gonna do it again. What? Okay, I finally got everything situated and Baloney's like, mm, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> also, who was it? I think it was Tim. Maybe Tim fantasizes he could look like me with that wig. <laughs> Look what he has to use to mimic a fraction of my power. Look at this. Ugh, yeah, baby. I have been working Four with years. Tim Ballard for almost one year. I have felt safe being Tim's partner in every operation I have been on. I have never been taken advantage of. He has always respected me and all the other operators around me. Awesome. I love that for you. What does that do for me? Because people said yeah. that to me about my abuser too. Like, well, he's never been inappropriate with me. Okay, well, that's great. I love that for you. But we're talking about me right now. Yeah. Hello? Is anybody home? Well, and also, this was before the lawsuit. Why was she already, allegedly she, already trying to, like, downplay sexual assault allegations? Lady Fang, thanks for the gifted. Poor bait. <laughs> because he's a poor starving cat. I know, and it's not even Tom. I don't even know where Tom is. This guy, 
This guy is not starving. Let me tell you. I fed him. <laughs> Don't let him lie Don't to you. Don't let them lie. Yes. He, has he is fed. a better liar than, than Timmy is, but, you know. She continues, Tim has devoted much of his life to helping everyone around him. All these negative media, lies, and accusations are doing nothing but tearing families apart, not rescuing children, and exposing tactics that we use every day to save children that we might not be able to use anymore. I'm sorry, what about this is preventing them from doing what they've always done? Exactly my fucking point. Why does Tim have to be in there in the trenches for this to be carried out? Did he not have an entire organization behind him doing all, basically all the heavy lifting or so to speak? He has already gained national fame. This has not made him any more recognizable than he already was to begin with. So if they're talking about it from like a safety standpoint. Dave, we have to paint the narrative. He blurs the faces of women who worked with him, but shows his wife's face and the faces of kids. Why? Because, because he doesn't care about child exploitation. Yes, they have to show the faces of the kids that this lawsuit is directly harming because otherwise they have absolutely no credibility to stand on. Exactly. Why are all these other um, who said that in chat, a.k.a. the cat lady, awesome point. Why do other organizations, anti-trafficking organizations not use this then? Yeah, or do if they, they do use it, they don't talk about it. Because even from like a military <laughs> standpoint. Operational like, security. OPSEC, hello? Hello. Like, military people look at what Tim does and are like, there is not a confidentiality, privacy, maintaining safety anywhere involved. Because they wouldn't be using burner phones. Period. That's not safe. No. Tim's face wouldn't be out on every fucking platform because he's got to satisfy his narcissistic tendencies. Because that would threaten the validity of the operation. And they wouldn't be talking about any of this shit. Like, just period. Or is it proprietary to Tim? It very well could be. Well, actually, technically, it wouldn't even be proprietary to Tim because Tim claims that it was a revelation from God. So technically, it would be proprietary to God. Once again, Mormons... Better be careful, Tim. Did you pay for your license to use the patented couple's ruse? Because if not you're going to be getting a lawsuit from a much more difficult plaintiff to <laughs> fight, let me tell you. Child trafficking is the darkest, most dangerous, and most disgusting thing on this earth. Going in to meet a trafficker with polite manners and tea will not save a child. You have to speak their you language, gotta be tattooed and look like, look like them, yeah. and get in their head. It is a place where the average person can't go and most likely can't understand the world. But thank goodness we have people who can go to that world and do understand it. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to save children. You can't teach this anywhere. It is a gift God has given certain people to do. So can we please stop? Okay, so here's, here's the rub. If Tim's not doing it, it can't be done because God hasn't called anybody else to do this. Scarcity mindset. Yep. Like, if I come forward about Tim, then nobody else is going to be doing this and nobody else is going to be saving those children. What does that do to your psyche as a victim? That is yep. like, would it make no one come forward? 100%. I, I am really questioning that this was written by one of the plaintiffs. I'm but really questioning. I, I believe it 100% because these are the things that Tim regurgitated to her. This is Tim's conditioning. It could. I, I mean, it sounds put together in a way that he was probably like, here, send this or something like this that. This is the plaintiff, though. I, know. I know. He was probably sent, like, fed it to them. In my opinion, that that's purely my opinion. I'm not saying that that is. Exposing the tactics and clear Tim Ballard's good name so we can continue saving children. Only two weeks after writing this glowing endorsement of Ballard, she sued him for sexual assault. So, she is either lying in this well-thought-out email, or she is lying to the court. Um, um I'm no. gonna guess, just conjecture here, uh, which, which situation do you have to swear under threat of perjuring yourself mm -hmm. um, that you won't lie? Is that in court, or is that in sending an email? Because uh, I've sent... 
a few a emails in my lifetime. I've never had to like swear on a holy book to say that I wasn't going to lie anytime I've sent an email. That's also, me this, personally. I don't know. This doesn't undermine the thing she's saying. Just because she believes that Tim's intent is good and that sex trafficking is bad. Absolutely. Does not mean that she's inherently lying about what she has said has happened. She can 100% believe both things at the same time. And that's why coming forward in a situation like this would be mm -hmm. more difficult. Because Tim probably isn't all around a horrible, disgusting person. And so, of course, it's going to be hard to come forward like that. And even further to my point, women who come forward have nothing to win and everything to lose. Every everything time. Everything to lose. Because now they are scrutinized under the court of public opinion that you put in your description. And they're getting ripped to shreds for their experience. What, what benefits them in this scenario? Yeah. There is nothing that is good or positive really that women get for coming forward other than the hope of justice and i don't care if they're suing for money i don't care if they're not because they deserve financial compensation Damages. for dealing with tim's bullshit. i yeah. deserve it for having to sit here and watch this stupid fucking video but nonetheless all they do <clears throat> is get scrutinized get torn apart they potentially lose jobs they are going to get called out by people at church like these women have everything yeah. to lose and tim these is are, over here these are not free these are not necessarily ex-Mormon women. No. Some of them are still active. So, hello? Like, this is your own bias of, like, because they like Tim and think that he's doing a good thing means they have to be lying. Yeah. Like, do you not understand the cognitive dissonance required to come forward about something like this? Not all abusers are, like, these concrete, like, boogeyman, horrible people that people would immediately perceive as bad. These are your neighbors. These are your friends. These are the Tim Ballards of the world. And who wants to come out against a Tim Ballard? These women are brave as Nobody. shit. Nobody. Yeah. Well, I'm going to take it even a step further because it seems like uh, these people over at whatever the fuck this channel's called are so lost in the sauce that they've lost their Mormon perspective even because she in that email stated that he was doing God's work, right? Mm-hmm. And within Mormonism, there is a standard of living that you have to walk upright in order to be carrying out God's work, whether that be in the temple, whether that be in church leadership positions, or whether that be in the missionary field. In all those circumstances, you are to be actively righting the wrongs and repenting for sins that you have committed in order to be able to carry out that work. So maybe if she is a believing Mormon, she could have written that email and she's saying these things that she believes. And then in order to hold Tim accountable so that he can repent for the sins that he has done so he can have restitution in those things and continue to go do God's work, she joined in on the lawsuit because... You can't be around representing God and saying, oh, God gave me the couple's ruse and God is direct me, directing me and saving these children if you're also going to be a vile sinner, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Just a couple cents, you know, you can bring your nose out of somebody's asshole for two seconds and consider the core tenant of your life instead of putting him at the center of your entire solar system. Anyway. <laughs> I'm going to slap the shit out of whoever wrote this script. Either way, she's lying. Either way, she's lying. Okay. okay well, I just laid out a scenario for you where she didn't have to lie at all. And you, you can take that into your consideration. To a narrative. Yeah. You are absolutely determined to a narrative. I believe women, when they come forward 100%, statistically speaking, and this is you outing yourself as a massive misogynist. There is, there's no reason to. And that's unsurprising. The void with the 13 months. That's that's king shit right there, by the way. Imagine picking this hill to die. Literally. Like, bro, Defending why do you ride this so hard guy. For yeah. He doesn't give a shit about you. He does not. Him and his wife might be like, oh, yeah, this is not. They don't care, dude. He you could literally fucking... get a regular job and this would be fine, but you he doesn't want to live like that. Guy. You are not the sun in his universe. He does no. not care about you, bro. He doesn't it give is a his shit. self -interest. He's a literal black hole. It should be treated as such. <laughs> Stay away. You got to put it back on the screen. Oh, shit. Sorry. 
Nobody heard the, uh, she lied. Let me play that back because we weren't on. Is lying to the court. Sorry. Either way, she is lying. Why did she change her narrative She's so lying. quickly? Was she recruited? The choice to use a After all, barriers, the accusers have already reached out That's to other colleagues choice. of Ballard who had no complaints to see if they would like to join the lawsuit. There was another operation which also was part of, um, uh, we met a woman who was selling uh, kids uh, in her salon um, and uh, before going there we discussed what we were going to say, what we were going to do, we agreed upon um, our steps and nothing was beyond which we agreed on. Uh, we played a couple and um, Great. we followed the couple That's rules. The way it should be. Uh, again, it was nothing inappropriate. I believe that Tim uh, has the best intention in his heart and what he is doing um, for the purpose of uh, yeah, produce stuff. Regardless of what you believe, believing... <laughs> I hate to bring out the classic that I hate so much, but facts don't care about your feelings. It doesn't matter what no. you believe. <sighs> I tried, Ivana Tinkle, thank you for the super chat. I tried to find out how many children Ballard has, quote, saved. Wikipedia that he probably wrote shows 5K to 6K. Glenn Beck site says less than 1K. What is it? Where's the proof? Less than 1K? On, and I feel That's like Glenn Beck is. right now is that there is no proof that he's Dude, I've been other than saying that too. women, allegedly. I've been saying that. This man is so backwards. How can anyone defend him, Tori? I don't even know, to be honest. Good question. Sky, thank you for the super chat. Sky, a desert cat. Sexual exploitation of women out of their will and children. Um, do you think that Tim is innocent of these accusations? Yes. Yes. It's heartbreaking to watch this go out there and, and we know the truth. And we have the truth. And we've just been muffled. We have not been able to get anything you out. There muffled. were operations. Some of them. Oh These women God. don't have platforms. These women don't have national news recognition. These women don't have a relationship with the former president of the fucking United States of America. So don't come to me about we don't have a platform. You have a massive platform. You are about to yeah. run for U.S. Senate. If, so if which you have, one is it? If you have ever sat in the Senate chamber and had some sort of deal with them, if you've ever sat with the president of the United Multiple States. Multiple times. You have a platform. And you're muffled? Absolutely not. No. You have been talking since the beginning of this. It's what you have to say doesn't make it all go away. Yeah. You don't have the fix it spray to make us believe that you're not privy to this and you didn't participate. It's not that you're being muffled. It's that people don't believe you because of the evidence. Were there. They were in a cover for status style of operation where you are playing a role. They are playing the role as a couple that protects the operatives, that protects the children. These are these are the things that you do. So there are pieces of truth in there and then there's just blatant lies. And I well, Ugh. let's say let's say all of that what you are saying is true. Maybe this all could have been avoided if you had regular employees that you well, well investigated and made sure that they were qualified rather than just random people that Tim was picking up. This probably all could have been avoided. But it seems like Tim has an MO and a lot of these people fit the description and now we're here. So I know they're lying. Movie about him. Don't yeah. talk to me about not having a platform. Yeah. It's because I, I know the evidence and I know my husband. And I don't argue that you I don't, think you don't do. know your husband, but I argue that given what we've seen from him, you know what he's told you. Because I watched the interview that they did where he had even said things that she didn't know. Yeah. So it's like, I would, like, if he, if my husband was in this industry, I probably wouldn't want to know about this shit either. But he probably takes advantage of that. And Ooh. he always has the perfect excuse. It's for the operative. Oh, she is wearing a cross. She's wearing a cross. And she's a Utah Mormon. Utah Mormons have not been quick to adopt the crucifix. So like I. When I was a kid in Mormonism, you weren't allowed to wear it. Yeah, that was like strictly against. He's not perfect. He's not perfect. And trying to figure out how to rescue over 7,000 children 
Oh, not just him personally. Yeah, or less, 7, less than 1,000 says or good friend Glenn, all, Glenn Beck. Yeah. Uh, somebody said, Riff, uh, well, somebody said, uh, well, technically zero is less than 1,000, which Riff Chick was the one who said that. But through his organization and as he's led teams and, and taught people how to do this, this has been groundbreaking work. So you're going to learn things. You're going to be like, okay, we ran into this situation and that could have been dangerous. Let's adjust. This has definitely been like a, oh. Also, this is not the house. I don't know if this is their house. I assume it is. This is not the house of somebody who's struggling for money. Yeah, maybe. This was a choice. Maybe we should have uh, actually their home. picked a different location. Okay. Location. I guess we shouldn't do operations. Definitely this trying way to anymore, pander, which is it's, it's unfortunate because they were rescuing people. I'm, I support my husband. Imagine this, sit here and stare at each other. Get as close to each other's faces as humanly possible and sit there and just stare at each other because that's not uncomfortable at all. Riff chick. She's got great skin, I'll give her that. Yeah. Hey, dude, dude who made this video, this is what we had to do to get those pictures. It wasn't like some sort of magic. You should know. You should know what we had to do We're to together get those Not some magic spirit of God that suddenly left our eyes. This whole thing breaks my heart. Oh, Tim speaks. I'm watching these women, these accusers. They were my friends, saying we didn't rescue any kids. They were there. We did. Where were the cameras? You have cameras all the time. Also, <laughs> it just shows what an app acid, huh? What a massive ego move this is for him. Because for him, it's all about what I've done. How many kids I've rescued. Like, this is, like, I don't label people as narcissists because it's not helpful to do, especially as a therapist. But there is narcissistic tendencies here, 100%. It is all about what I have done. How many kids I've rescued. It's not, I'm really humble and I do this work because I appreciate it and I rescue kids. It's, here's how many kids I've rescued. Here's a movie about my efforts. Here, let me make a little mini documentary series about how much I've done and how I hate people who criticize me. Like... It's giving really insecure. Really. Siobhan, I apologize for the Tim jump scare. I didn't watch this video beforehand, so. No. Take down traffickers. We did rescue kids. Now, it's important to note that two of them didn't even make it on operations. They were cut for extremely inappropriate behavior. One of them was kicked. Great. I'm glad that you did that. On the part of who? <laughs> but what happened to the others that you then decided to be inappropriate with? Also, what what is the line for extremely inappropriate behavior? Because uh, getting allegedly sloshed at the strip club apparently is in bounds, or showering with them, or insinuating that you want to be the one to do their Brazilian wax next time. That's where's the line exactly? Tori Van Carabroke. What's heartbreaking is the victims of this disgusting wannabe God proclaiming abuser being uh, being told they're lying about their trauma, not Timmy's rep uh, reputation. Rep. Rep. Out of a train. Seriously. By another person that I asked to kick him out because they invited me, this person invited me to go up to her hotel room in a way that was extremely inappropriate. Another one was blocked by me because she was being very inappropriate way outside of the right. lines and uh, right. she kept trying to get a hold of me multiple times this will all come out one of the pr people suing me i've never even met never been in the same room um now Sucks. the few that actually went on operations i mean we rescued kids together we risked our lives together we also blame 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 <laughs> i mean this is this is a uh, a fan-made situation but he is participating in this, and I cannot imagine a single lawyer out there that would be like, give the green Tim, light. Yeah, idea. go ahead. Yeah, go out there and this speak on YouTube. Do thing. make Let these people make a whole little apologetic situation for you because that's definitely going to help our case. Is he representing himself? Because that would be a lot. <laughs> Cried with victims together, and they're acting like okay. nothing ever happened. That doesn't um, mean that you can't So be it's heartbreaking to me because I still hold them as heroes. But I can't stand by and let them attack this cause and lie about real you. life operations where real kids' lives are at stake. Again, this is what they're doing to manipulate the narrative. It's all about they're interfering with the cause. They're preventing kids from being taken care of. Like, exactly. Somebody who abuses women shouldn't be in anti-trafficking. No. Period. 
and that's you. So yeah. I don't know what to tell you. It, it, it's it's like the most difficult position to have, as, and that's why we never talked about this beforehand. Because how do you argue against such a cause? But like, that's what they're doing. It, they it sounds it to be insane that, way. that you're yeah. like, yeah, these uh, these women really hate that he's rescuing um, children from being trafficked. Like, absolutely nobody is going to come to your rush to your side and be like, yeah, what? Unless you have really mounting evidence like in the case that we have now but stacy said is the person who is suing him that he's never met the husband of that one victim because that would make sense that would make sense and my family is at stake i can't i've got to stand up and tell the truth and it, it hurts because at the same time i still respect and hold them as heroes <laughs> the lawsuit oh, against God. tim and Catherine ballard is not just a legal battle it's a oh. storm that threatens everything they have built. Financially, the stakes are monumental. Legal defense is not just... See, I also don't buy that even from like a social capital standpoint because he's already left OUR and already works for another trafficking organization. So like, really? But they're probably not cutting him a check the same size as OUR That's was. That's probably fair, yeah. Costly. It's a vortex draining resources at an alarming rate. Resources that were once channeled into life-saving operations this are now roll. diverted to court <laughs> fees and legal expenses. He doesn't work for OUR anymore! So this argument doesn't even stand. They can't spend money that he has on the operations. Bro, he was making like $300,000. A year. Allegedly. Based on these tax documents. I don't remember specific numbers. But, like... You can't tell me that he just took all that money and then dropped it right back in the organization. There's no that's way. that's his salary. And yeah. I don't doubt that they have high expenses as a family because they have like nine kids. Hello? But he doesn't even work for OUR anymore. So you can't be like, oh, poor wayfaring man of grief has can't take the hundreds of thousands of dollars that he makes a year anymore and put it back into trafficking. No, bitch. Ow. Hi, Tommy. He Come says, I Tom. need attention. <laughs> the hardest part for me was that they sued Children Need Families, which was my project under Operation Underground Railroad. And they, they were suing everybody. Girl, it's a whole organization. It's not targeted <laughs> it's, you. You were under the same 501c3. That's just consequences. Sorry. I just love being a part of that work. It's so exciting to think that you're bringing a child out of an orphanage out of a situation like that and into a home it doesn't end with bringing them into the home there's a lot of a lot of work when i found out that children need families had been tori sued, yeah tim and lori with the meritable that, r word doesn't exist that is really anything. lori alexander that's really affected me we had 25 families in the process of, of filling out their applications. Five families already completed. They, they just needed the funds. And, and you know who's to blame for all this, unfortunately? Your husband. <laughs> you can feel however you want to feel about this. And you. it sounds like you were doing a lovely thing. And this doesn't mean that you could not do nonprofit work in another capacity. Because again, here we are pushing the narrative that if it's not done Tim's way, and if we don't restore Tim to his picture perfect reputation no. that he had before, that they won't be able to do this anymore because that's simply not true. It's not Tim's way, it's God's way. It's God's way. But like she could literally go with her background and experience, she could appeal to any anti-trafficking nonprofit and say, hey, here's my background, here's my, here's my experience, use me. Nonprofits are always desperate for people. She wants to do that work, 100%, they will, there will be a space where her tools are utilized and needed. So this whole argument that, like, he's ruined my life. Like, the only person you've got to be mad at is your husband. Ivana, thanks for the super chat. Guess who's suspiciously quiet? Sean Reyes, Utah's attorney general, Tim's BFF, and mother hugger. 100%. Sean Reyes, when it comes to Utah state government, number one op of mine is that stupid bald idiot Spencer Cox, Spencer Cox 
Right below him, number two, is Sean Reyes. Also a little cosplaying... Sorry, n no hate to cosplayers or whatever, but he's like a Gravy Seal type cosplayer. Bitch boy. Sorry. And everything was stopped. And... Oh, that just makes me sad. Do they realize that those are children in orphanages? Do we have the same energy for the kids who are representing themselves in a court of law down at the border because their parents brought them here to this country? I'm not country? even gonna. I'm not are even. Are we gonna have bring the same up. the I'm same energy for those kids or what? Her resources and her ability to help kids is not exclusive to OUR, and it is not exclusive to her husband. She does not have to say, what? hey, I'm Tim Ballard's husband. She can go work for a nonprofit, and there are plenty of people who would take her on. So I do not buy this whole you're ruining my life bullshit because it's just that. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. Advocate for yourself. Find a nonprofit that's desperate to do this work and go do it. Corny. Welcome, Jules. Adoption already takes so long. So long. If I could change one thing about adoption, I would change well, how long it takes. Your husband was in the Senate and stuff. Maybe you guys could have been also, aside from giving grants to families so that they could do it, maybe be pushing for some adoption reform, doing some of that macro also work. not ready to have conversations around adoption trauma and transracial adoption trauma. Yeah. Because the quicker you can get them out of an orphanage into a home, the better for that child. And I still... No doubt. But what does that have to do with anything right now? What does this have to do with Tim Ballard being inappropriate? Nothing. That's it. Nothing. Propaganda. It's... Oh, my God. I cannot understand. Children Need Families doesn't have its own account. We have no funds. The funds were being given to us by OUR. And so there is nothing to sue. There's not, there's not like a piggy bank of money. It literally just stopped the project. That's it. It just stopped it. And I'm not I say it again. would like to know sense. why. How did these children... Start, start your own 501c3 that's not under OUR and seek donations. People and you can it. continue to do it. 100%. Yeah. This is like learned helplessness right now. Seriously hurt you oh just it makes me really sad which is valid but we're taking this out on the wrong people yeah. like you're taking out this out on these women it should be your fucking husband right hello <laughs> accountability obviously she is also a victim in this situation it's just hard that she is being complicit She's not being a girl's girl. She is no. instantly rushing to the side of her husband, who she doesn't even know what he does on a day-to-day -day basis. He so, doesn't know that she that he took their son to a fucking strip club. Yeah. Hello? Which she should have been... I would have been irate. I would have been irate. Who hurt you? That would be your husband, fam. Literally. I, I don't understand... See, I don't buy this at all. I don't understand why. Well, I mean, she's in pain, why obviously. Why you would want to put a stop to this. So that... They don't. They don't want to put a stop to this. And if you They want to put a stop to your husband. He's a menace. They were like, this cause is important. And this cause is, like, God-driven. And they're not trying to stop the cause. The only thing that's happening here is your husband is being held accountable for his inappropriate behavior. And so you can feel however you want to about that, and that's valid. But stop acting like they're coming out here and these women specifically took the money from your organization. Because that's not what's happening here. They didn't attack you. Your husband attacked them, and now he's facing the consequences. And unfortunately, you got caught up in that firestorm. Yeah. And that sucks for you, but you're pointing the finger at the wrong person. Also, I didn't see a tear either. I know. Maybe you should have talked to your husband about hiring an actress to play you. God. <laughs> Um, what was I saying? What was I going to say? Um, damn, it's, it's just painting the narrative of, uh, oh, these people, they're take, they're trying to take candy from a baby. Right. It's cartoonish. That is really hard. No. 
now we gotta show the pictures of the kids again because we're appealing to yeah, your I'm emotional not, senses, I'm right? I'm not doing this. The destruction that has already happened because of these lawsuits of is you. immeasurable. Operations on three different continents have already been destroyed. One was a North Korean. This is exactly what they're trying to Maybe do. you should have built them better. <laughs> this is 100% what they're aiming for is one was a north korea whatever he's about to say 100 percent don't believe it this is a pr move this is not you're coming after me this is you're coming after my organization so stop when in reality this has nothing to do with the organization nothing to do with he doesn't even he's not even there anymore god in trafficking ring that was taking women well it in part is the organization because this was allowed to happen in, within well, the here's what so. it comes down to, Tim. You play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. You mean to tell me that you acted inappropriately with women, and so the nonprofit that you worked for was like, mm, dude, that's not okay. Like, and now you're mad that they told you you can't do it anymore? Like, big man. Like, a fucking river, dude. Big man. What do you think was going to happen? He didn't think he was going to get caught. That's what he thought yeah. was going to happen. Different continents have already been destroyed. One was a North Korean trafficking ring that was taking women and children from North Korea into Europe. That smells Mexico. Sus what? to me. That smells knowing <laughs> the relationship the U.S. has with North Korea. Like, you're telling me you were going to go to North Korea for an op? Are you serious? <laughs> no, they were already there. What kind of delusion is this? He's taking taking notes from Yeonmi Park. <laughs> oh my God, it is going to Los Angeles. It's over uh, because of what's been revealed in the lawsuits. Two different locations More in Mexico, actions? one in particular that I want to talk about with one operator uh, who was heroic and I still hold as a hero, even though she is attacking me with Fucking exaggerations yes, and lies. That's um, just a regular. It is also, but it's also just a regular. Trash takes thing. itself out every single time. <laughs> she was my partner on probably a dozen different operations. She came back dozens of times, was so good at her job, we had her as a trainer. She trained on multiple continents, other people to do the status for cover couples tactic. Uh, we infiltrated probably is one- Is it the couples tactic or is it couple... the couples ruse? This is why this is not established for me because they swap out the words all the time. Yeah. I don't believe he had anything going on and yeah, there's not a fucking chance. There's the most no dangerous traffickers in Mexico. Uh, this person had the police in her pocket. She had a doctor on on call. Are you Tim Blue Line Ballard oh, hitting on the police right now? <laughs> Perhaps you should have called up your buddy Sean Reyes and got him on that. Excuse because excuse me, you're hating on the, you, your hating organization. On the cops with the police, like it's your like only work. What are like you it's going out about? of style. That would come to the sex party she would hold with children. The youngest boy she was trafficking was uh, six years old, and the doctor came to sew up the children after they were raped, so that she could. So here's what we're doing now: is we're appealing to your sensibilities as a human to go. Oh my God, these horrible things are happening. This is tragic. This is like, and we're just going to completely. Because here's what happens from a brain perspective, okay? If we look at this as a therapist, we're moving from my ability to be in the front of my brain, my prefrontal cortex, where I'm doing my critical thinking, where I'm taking in information, being critical about it, analyzing it, weighing it against other things. And now I'm in the back of my brain, which is more dysregulated by emotions, our amygdala, which is appealing to my, oh my God, this is heartbreaking, this is horrible, this is disgusting, I cannot believe this happens. And a lot of times we can't hold both at the same time. And so he's hoping that your amygdala, the emotional part of you, is going to completely take over and disrupt any kind of cognitive, like, critical thinking processing that can be happening. Allegedly, oh, Julie was asking, he did say does, ha, does Tim Ballard have any real training or qualifications to be doing uh, this in the first place? He um, allegedly worked for he, Homeland Security. No, he definitely did work for Homeland Se Security, but... As far as his, the scope of his job title, that we don't know what he was doing. I mean, he could so, have been sitting at a desk all day. He long. could have been a desk jockey the whole time. Uh, get them back in the market within six weeks, she said. Basically like an, a, a quick episiotomy on these children. That's how evil she was. And without the couple's tactic, it never would have happened. And she knows this, this operator who's suing. 
I had to abuse these women in order for this to happen. So I had to cause more trauma to prevent more trauma from happening to other people. Yeah. What? What? Uh, Ivana said, Sean Reyes went on a couple jumps. I think the jump are still on YouTube maybe. Yeah, and this is exactly what we're talking about. Um, why would you be taking the Utah Attorney General on this super classified project and then publishing it on YouTube so that all the other traffickers can see who you are and the way that you Once operate? The cosplay is important. It is ridiculous. There's no way that that situation was real at all. He knows this. We infiltrated using that technique. Infiltrated. And that case has been exposed. She names the names. She names the places. I've got calls from Mexico saying what has happened. Everyone's been exposed all the time in money and disguises. She's hiding behind an acronym so her family is safe. My family no, is not. not. <laughs> yeah, when was this not filmed? Anymore. The operators in Mexico are not. And she's entitled to that. She does not have to declare her identity. Yeah. In order to unfortunately, allege what has happened to her. Unfortunately, because you're such a megalomaniac, you have chosen to put all of this out there and for yourself. Your actions, my unfortunately, you don't get to have the anonymity by your own choice. She doesn't have a platform. You do. Your freaking cronies are going to go after her. So I don't blame her for wanting to protect her identity because she doesn't owe her identity to the public to have what happened to her be true. Uh, Tori said, but would we be surprised if this didn't even happen and he was just making up a story to appear how he wants to appear? Oh, I don't know. Uh, 100%. Tell the truth even, even the narrative within the Sound of Freedom movie is people have contested it and come forward with facts. It is so, 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 so fictionalized. Yeah. Like there are little bits of truth, but it is way more than the actual truth is. It's all been exposed. Uh, my kids go to school every day and... Good. I have to wonder every day, are they going to come home? Bro, you, your kids go to school in fucking Utah. <laughs> Maybe you Chill. shouldn't be showing your kids' faces. Maybe you shouldn't be... Like, don't come crying to me that you're worried about your kids going to school when you're taking your oldest son on ops and strip clubs. Like... Don't come crying to me that yeah. you care about the safety of your children when you're doing that bullshit. Also, you don't, this whole documentary, you're plastering their faces every everywhere. goddamn where. Like, if you care about the privacy of your children, stop showing their faces. Stop posting them on social media. Stop giving anybody any opportunity to know who they are so that they could do exactly what you're allegedly saving people from. And it, you act like that qualifies as like it cancels out the women who have trauma from what you've done. It doesn't. Again, he's appealing to your senses. Poor me, poor yep. my kids. Cry baby. My family's terrified. On top of all the other stuff that's happening. And don't and don't get me out of your actions. Don't get me wrong. It is awful that they have to be terrified. And nobody should be acting inappropriately, let's be clear. But who is the author of that terror that would be you would because be you. of the position that you decided to put your family in to further your These career your or choices. organization what it is whatever it we've is. been exposed to dangerous traffickers who have deep connections to cartels are the cartel okay, you can't tell me that wasn't happening before you and your wife have plastered your faces and your family's faces with this cause since the beginning so you can't tell me because these women have come forward now that all of that is dangerous to you? Bullshit, Tim. That's bullshit. You've been doing this since day one. These women being involved have nothing to do with that. If you wanted to protect your family, you would have kept them out of this from day one. Yep. But instead, you're using them as a shield. Yep. To... Um, to protect yourself from any sort of allegation that's been flying your way and have the police in their pocket she focuses on Again, dirty things that i said as my undercover persona see your id just so i know your real name i don't want to i don't want to be i'm gonna reiterate this if you need to go read those text messages dude 
Uh, yeah, read those text messages, and if you need to uh, method act that hard, you're not a good actor. You should not be doing this. A trafficker <laughs> could, in theory, maybe look at your phone, but they're not going to go through the six weeks leading up to the operation. They're not going to sit down and go, come, Timmy, let's roll through your text messages with all these women for the past six fucking weeks. <laughs> Don't act like you just started playing this whole couple's ruse once you got there because we've seen the text, boy, and that's bullshit. You know what I mean? Well, also, like, baby, we just got... This Coca. is my real name. Coca. When we go into these dirty places, when we go into the dirty beach club where we have to establish credibility, whether we're in a room sauce. or outside, you don't break character. You don't know where cameras are. So I'm saying... Yeah, so th let's set up a, a meeting at, at the beach club where a police <laughs> boat could, from the water really far out, have telephoto evidence of uh, crimes being committed. Okay. And he's talking about how he's worried these traffickers are going to retaliate. Who is this man? <laughs> I mean, you're putting, I mean, maybe he's in jail and that's their reasoning, but you're blasting this dude and the dude at the beginning too. Yeah. Saying dirty things all the time. And she knows I'm saying it as my undercover persona, but in the lawsuit, she takes these dirty things I'm saying and pins it on Tim as if Tim is saying it. No. And she knows better. She does Dog. know better. You know better, this you is... bitch ass. <laughs> This is like the most feeble attempt to be like, guys, it's not like that. I We read those messages Bro, and it... We read the messages where you were talking inappropriately with her and then the, only You were so down bad, like, dude. Oh, my persona is coming out right now. Ooh, like, it's what about Brian. Then, Tim? What I about just say then? fuck, 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 what shit. What if it's not okay even if you're at an over, undercover persona? Like, what if it's not okay even then? Have you considered that? Yeah. Because, like I said, you don't got to be saying all this shit six weeks beforehand in order to prove it to the traffickers. He's not going to go through yeah. your phone records. I know these operations are so draining and emotionally damaging to all of us, all the operators. But that is not an excuse to lie about me it's on these operations. It's not an excuse for you to be inappropriate. The couple's status for cover tactic has rescued dozens of girls. And now it can't be used again, and that's tragic. Fortunately, this you were no, you out can't there use it again. You were out there telling all of your donors about the fucking couple's ruse. And now you're saying you can't do it anymore. <laughs> all Why of a sudden, can't... now that there's a, a a lawsuit against you, you can't do it anymore. Maybe you can't do it anymore because you can't fucking control yourself. Because you're yourself. yeah, you're you like down yourself. bad twenty four seven. Operator made a video months after these operations where she said that inappropriate things happened, declaring that nothing inappropriate even remotely happened. Okay, this is my acknowledgement. I and went down to BBI during that time and in Cozumel from May 25th to June 8th of 2021. Um, in Cozumel and in BBI, played as part of the couple ruse with Tim and just wanted to acknowledge that they're. We oh, kept BBI. all the boundaries there. So and I will read them. No kissing on the lips, touching, or exposing private parts, including breasts and genitalia, and any other thing you can imagine. We kept really strict boundaries. So. Um. Okay. And? What did she say this under pressure? Is she afraid of retaliation? Does she want to continue to work with you so she's willing to tough it out? Like, I can think of a million reasons that this might not be accurate. And she knows better. But Don't to make a case, that's what they're going to like do. That's what all of them are of doing. Shit. All these weird and crazy things that I'm being quoted as saying, that's my undercover persona, whether it's in a training, in a training text, or in undercover. In any situation in a court of law, this would not hold water. I am sorry. That was my alter ego, Judge. <laughs> <laughs> Judge, I was being Brian at the time. I was Brian. Brian took over. Brian has a tattoo on his Brian. Brian it says the tattoo. F word in Spanish. <laughs> and I told my wife about that. She was very disturbed. She yeah. does not like Brian. Her um, text messages. These are undercover conversations. No, you're mad that they have to out. be dirty. It's not me. <laughs> oh, they don't. Uh, <laughs> 
here's here's where you're wrong, Jordan. He wrote the script on how it's supposed to be done. How who are you to say that's not how it's supposed to be done? So you're telling me that in order for this to work, you guys got to be doing this for weeks beforehand. You got to be doing it in Utah. It can't be, hey, before we go on to meet this guy, let's do like a bunch of texting and we'll pull up the past few days. No, this went on for a long ass time, dude. And you can't just blame everything on your other persona. In any other situation where somebody is being accused of assault, if you pulled this out, that judge would look at you like you've got three fucking heads, dude. This does not hold water. It doesn't even have to be, be like, in court. It's like my alter ego. <laughs> oh my you can God. rear end someone and be like, oh, sorry, guys. That wasn't me. That, that was, was actually um, Joaquin, uh, who really loves just rear ending people. So I am not at fault. <laughs> Let the record state I am not at fault. You can't call the police. This is what he probably um, tells his wife though. That was Brian, honey. honey oh that yeah. Was Brian. Like he could use this. I in wonder so if many he ways. uses Brian against her. Well, it's like a perfect. Like I don't have to take any accountability for anything I've ever done, and that's why I think he's extremely full of shit too. Because he can't own up to anything he could have done differently. Anything. Like when you're establishing credibility, sometimes a PR kind of like yeah tactic is to own up to part of like one thing that you could have done better because it's like oh they are willing to take some responsibility for things no he's not willing to do any of that his ego's too fucking big his ego's so big that even his body can't contain it he has to have brian yeah well and here's another little uh little detail why do the operators who are going to be in the room have to be the ones running the burner phones right why does it have to be you tim? why why does it have to be tim and the person he's doing the couple's ruse, sending these text messages back and forth to make it look good. Have it be two of your what, male operators. Yeah, what if it is somebody else and they're just punching in shit yeah. at a script? It doesn't even. have to be believable if they're just looking it does at the text not, messages. Yeah. It, no more believable than your cringe ass. Yeah. Oh my God, I'd be embarrassed to show that to anyone. Tori rewards Tim accolades. Tim, savior, Tim, accountability. It, it was, was Brian. Brian. <laughs> <laughs> actually that was brian brian but that's what they're focusing on because that's what the, the the case requires in order to gain the the millions they seek um instead of focusing yeah, why does why does why is tim out here about the money tim's out here getting all the credit and brian was in there doing the dirty work uh, honestly and this now that again, Brian did one bad thing, this is another tactic that they use gone. when women come forward is they say it's about money. So women feel like they have to either not come forward at all or they have to like, you know, you have more famous like celebrity women who will sue for like, like Taylor Swift comes to mind with her sexual assault where she sued, she countersued or she sued Oof. for a dollar. Right. And so just to prove a point, but these women deserve compensation for this. Like, we shouldn't be discrediting them because they're asking for compensation. They have trauma. This is traumatic. That money can be used for whatever they want it to, but it's probably going to be used for things like therapy, Tim, to process the trauma that you've caused them and the trauma that they're experiencing. And potentially, like, I read the lawsuit. Part of that is potentially for job loss and not being able to work and your cronies coming after them and potentially yeah. having to find a new job. And maybe move because they're not safe in their home anymore. Yeah. Like, this isn't just about they want the money. Like, that is discrediting completely. It's a yeah. tactic. Like, we know what you're doing. Rebecca also brings up a good point. He talked about Mormonism and other shit on this conversation, too. It wasn't all in character. Boom. That was on the non-burner phones, but I can't imagine that the, that same stuff wasn't also coming up in these other conversations because they were supposed to be conversations that were getting them into character, right? Uh -huh. So, anyway. Uh, Carrie Ann with the two months. Dude, I apologize for my alters all the damn time. Tim needs to chill. Tim needs to chill. Talk. Um, what they actually did heroically, which was to rescue children who are now in jeopardy. It's so emotionally draining, it's so emotionally damaging. I wonder if those operators and those accusers have also reflected on the immediate cost, the damages that have already happened, not to mention the future damage that will come if they prevail and take resources away from the rescue operations. And I wonder if they think it's worth it. Has it been worth it? You don't even work it? for OUR anymore, Tim. You don't even work for OUR anymore. And they should be suing this organization because nonprofits are supposed to have preventative measures in place so shit like this doesn't happen. The fact that OUR 
is HR department did not take care of this in a way that was appropriate, even when these women approached other people within the organization, because that's also documented within the lawsuit. That's also a problem. Yep. OUR operated like the people at, that are sitting at OUR in leadership positions deserve to be held accountable for that shit, too. So just because it's for a good cause doesn't mean you can't do bad. Doesn't mean it doesn't mean that child trafficking is like a bad cause because they're suing you. It means you're being held account about like accountable for bad behavior. They're not suing child trafficking, sir. <laughs> and if these are the consequences of your actions, so maybe you, Tim, should have thought about that before you were inappropriate with them because the only people that OUR has to be mad at is themselves and you. Goofy. Think of the children. Yeah, you weren't thinking of the children. You were texting send pics. Yep. Sir? Disrespectfully? Uh, we're, we're out here creating a, uh, a situation where a state school board member in your fucking state is bullying a kid because one father was transvestigating a kid on the opposite team. I don't know, dude. Maybe your kid just fucking sucks at sports. Sometimes it is the way that it is, but we Sometimes don't have it's to. Not that complicated. Yeah, it's up to us to not be living, reliving our glory days of sports through our kids to the point where we're like, "Hey, Natalie Klein, I think there's a kid on the other side of or on the other team that's trans. What are we gonna do th about this?" And yeah, MH makes a good point. Why does this require you to LARP the sex, Tim? <laughs> And somebody else also made a good point. Why don't you have, like, a script for this stuff? Exactly. Like, you don't have to be creative. You don't have to do something different every time. It doesn't even have to be verbatim. Just no. bullet points, talking points. Like, Jesus, there's so many ways I can think of around what? this where you don't. Why are you the head of the organization involved in this? Yeah. Why are we you want to be relying on people ad-libbing the fucking rescue? This is your opportunity to live out your fantasies in a way, but that is not consensual with the other people. So... I'm sorry to say. Sit silently and collect whatever millions you dreamed of. And then I ask myself, was it worth it? Was it worth it to go through all that pain and suffering? Oh God. God we're pain right now. The self-sacrifice. That infiltration. Risking our lives. You said it right. Risking your All these lawsuits oh that have come because of this. No one to... asked you to do I don't this. Know. I don't know, dog. If this I were is going, a if I'm putting my life on the line, the person sitting next to me, I'm going to want to be confident that they're going to be able to handle the situation. If and not just random, there people are guns that pulled, pulled on me. Like, hey, you want to go on an op? Because that's what he did. Yeah. Like we had somebody that, that, last... that was his neighbor that they offered. He was like, hey, do you want to go? And they were like, uh, pardon? No. <laughs> Smallest violin for you, Timmy. Real talk. Bankruptcy looms large, a specter that endangers not just the Ballard family. What rules, you sons of bitches? The but the very of bankruptcy. <laughs> wham, 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 womp, womp, dude. I've seen your salary. You can't pander to other people out here who are struggling living paycheck to paycheck and being like, oh my God, we might go bankrupt. But I was like ignoring boundaries and sexually assaulted women, allegedly, and it was non consensual. And that's why, like, Sorry, I don't feel bad for you, dude. Right. Like you guys can play the sad music over the documentary and can play the footage like of him with the kids. It's not doing nothing for me. It's not. And it's not because I'm a bad person. I'm there. I'm a therapist. I'm empathetic for a living. Right. This is what I do. But I'm not going to sit here and allow you to put out this whole thing like un without any commentary about how I see through every single thing that you're doing. It's just to discredit these women. LKY 10. The music is giving Saturday's Warrior. Literally. I hate that. <laughs> future of their mission. Now, at this critical juncture, the Ballard family reaches out for your support. This is more than a call for help. It's an invitation to stand for justice, to uphold Go the values me, of Venmo. compassion and bravery <laughs> that Tim and Catherine have embodied throughout their journey. Your contribution to the Ballard Family Defense Fund is not just a donation. There it is! There it is! It's a statement. 
It's a deck. I cannot imagine making a video, taking it upon myself to make a video like this and then being like, oh, they need your money here. Declaration that you believe in the power of truth and the importance of fighting against unjust accusations. Every dollar you give strengthens their ability to defend themselves and continue their vital work. We're on like an the time to act is now. now. Your immediate support can make Call a real difference. It can help cover legal Call expenses, save protect TV. the family from financial <laughs> ruin, and ensure that their mission to save and rehabilitate children doesn't falter in these trying times. Donating is simple. Click the link below to contribute. Absolutely. Whether it's a small amount or a larger contribution, your support is invaluable. By. Share this message with your friends and family and let them know why this cause matters. Together, we can create a wave of support that can turn the tide in favor of the Ballard family. Closing. I'd like to stick around. I'd like to continue these rescue efforts. Well, well sometimes actually, we it's not in the cards, like buddy. To continue in this fight. I am so in love with this woman. She, hey, PR uh, move right here. PR move right here. Awesome. Let's let's emphasize how much you love your wife. Touch her. Be close to her. Emphasize how much you care about her. Make sure it's incompatible with the narrative that you would be into other women. Well, I wouldn't even be able to have any fight left in me were it not for your light. And I'm so grateful to to Catherine. I'm so grateful to Alex yeah, Cuadro yeah. and Troy Abels and the friends who put this video together as a service to us. Oh, to yeah, there you go. Troy Abel, that's the guy's name. Oh, his name is Troy. He's a buddy. What a terrible name. How dare you do Troy from High School Musical so poorly? I know, right? T is he's a buddy. Of Troy. course, of course he's coming out here and doing this. Hey, Troy, you maybe should have consulted with Tim's legal team because I this might not maybe be the best did. option. Maybe he has lawyers that are like, yeah, I cannot this is a good PR move. I cannot think. Well, a PR is different from somebody who's defending you in court. Oh, for sure. Because I do I know. not know that any lawyer out there would be like, yeah, that's probably not a great idea. I mean, I, that's what I think, but we're not lawyers, so. Get the yeah, truth that's just me. out. And like I was saying, we just want to get back to work. Now, our hope is to be wow, able to so get back like to doing the do things that, that we've dedicated our life to. This I is want the to get back. That I have with this. Like, please give us your money. We have functionable skills that could do well in basically any other job position, including the background that I have in this nonprofit work that any nonprofit would love to use me for. But God but didn't give me your money. God didn't tell money, Tim please. he has to work at Sephora, though. Money, he please. told Tim he has to save these kids who are being trafficked. Also, that they have to do the couples ruse that uh, opens up to a lot of dude. sexual. Uh... Start your own nonprofit. <laughs> no. You did it once. You did it once. Do it Just do it again. Oh Appar my God. Apparently, you've got those actionable skills. What happened? And if you're like, oh, well, we don't make that money Rip anymore. Chick. Dude, money, please. Money, please. Like you know, like then that's your own problem because you mismanaged your money. I know. Like I don't care that you might not have that money anymore. You were making how much a year, dude? Like the rest of the average humanity would kill for money like that. What'd you do with it? You got to spend it Ridiculous. on lawyer costs and forming your case. Oh, let me cry for you for your accountability for your bad behavior. Yeah. Well. I don't know how 501c3s work, but like you set up an an LLC as an entity to protect you from Which liability, you right? Would a 501c3 not act in a similar manner? I don't know. I don't know. This is bullshit. I know that. To adoptions, it means so much to me and to just helping i wouldn't know the answer to that question because i pay taxes <laughs> the women and children around the world we well, we've been fortunate like, to have to have a taste of somehow is related to this what it feels like to help people and it's been hard it's been hard the suffering continues and we're just having to fight off a blazer with that shirt lies so it's his that's been hard we want to get back to work you can
Oh my god, do I have to hold your hand? Do the poorsies over here have to hold your hand to help you understand how to make money? Pull yourself up by your bootstraps and get to work. Come Nobody on. wants to work these days. This is like liberal god. ideology 101. You want people to finance your lifestyle? You want people to finance this whole thing that you did, that you caused to come and bring upon yourself that was single-handedly your fault? You Are you, are you looking for a handout? He's looking for oh a handout. Oh my god. Wow, the liberals. No wonder all the, all the right-wingers that he surrounded himself with are uh, distancing themselves now because... He's looking for a damn handout. What the hell? Someone said they visited the donation page and people are donating. There were multiple donations even oh, we're gonna in the be past looking. hour, but it doesn't tell you how much. And something else I want you all to know, as one of many, many lies in the, in the lawsuits, if you want to talk about credibility, they have none. Uh, Wrap it up. I've seen reports that we have up to $14 million socked away somewhere to- I don't think you have that much money. Sheesh, if you do, damn dude. Shit, yeah. Don't feel sorry for us because we have all this money. That's complete nonsense. We are li So what'd you do with it? What? Where did it go? Because no, they do have it. And he's like, oh, this isn't the, this isn't enough. 000. But 300,000 or upwards, I mean, even upwards of 100,000 a year is more than the average human. Okay. So you can't come pandering down to the regular people on the planet here and be like, oh, we have no money. Like if you're making more than like 80K, dude. If you're making more than probably 70K, you're making more than the average American, okay? Seriously. So tap into your base. Like, you need to sit with the Republicans, apparently, to talk about this because... Did, did the, the dog, dog eat, eat the money? No, it was Brian. <laughs> Ketamine and lap dances. That's where all the money goes. Literally, with Catherine as my witness, we're on the verge of bankruptcy. We don't have... So file for bankruptcy. I don't see what the issue is here. Right, was the file for bankruptcy? File for bank okay. bankruptcy. Okay. Like, um, your kids shouldn't have to suffer, but again, this is your own doing. This is your fault. I hope you know that. And I hope the guilt eats away at you at night. But and I hope Catherine gets away from like, you because... It's probably Brian. Yeah. Brian took the money and ran. Oh, Brian. <laughs> no. I need to fight this. Um, and contrary He forgot to, to cancel his private jet subscription. Oh, damn it, honey. You didn't remind me to cancel. <laughs> Normies have to file for Chapter 7. Buck up, kiddos. Yeah, yeah. you got to file for bankruptcy. Sorry. Sorry, it is what it is. What they want to believe. I'm not some big owner in Sound of Freedom. Okay? Um, so we are we are suffering. And the I would like a fact check on that one. Yeah, we need help. I'm not some big owner. We... Is it not your story? If you're not some big owner in Sound of Freedom, that is your fault. Your That's fault. your story, and you didn't get a good f yeah, price Corey, for it. Yeah, file for bankruptcy. It worked for Trump seven times. Yeah, take a page out of your bestie Trump's book and just yeah. file it. Yeah. Ask him, ask him, ask him if he's he got a it. recommendation, yeah. you know? You've got the resources. Come on, buddy. The bootstraps are right there for you. We have nine children, and the Lord has blessed us so much. We feel so grateful. But let me also say this is a common within Mormonism. It's like, you know, the more kids often equates to like, oh, like we're we're more choice. I don't know that everybody believes that. But for a long time, I think that's yeah. what a lot of people believed. But you chose to have those children. Like having children is expensive. And I 100 percent can empathize with that because we have one. But you chose to have nine. That was a choice on your part. This isn't about. Is it moral or is it not? It's you know the financial expectations that come with one child, let alone nine. And so I don't necessarily feel bad for you when you have, this isn't the 1950s, you have birth control at your disposal. You have vasectomies at your disposal. You have ways of not having that many children and you chose to have them anyway. So don't pander to me about how many kids you have. I don't care. <sighs> oh... And, and it's also the uh, the blessings and our tribulation because they both come from the Lord situation here. Fighting the bishop's storehouse. Right? Yeah. Go to the bishop's storehouse. These lies is way more money than we have. 100% of the money donated is going to the Ballard Family Defense Fund. It's going to paralegal. Ooh, that naming too. It's not, the we're not defending, we're, you're not funding the defense of Tim. And oh, you are, and it's subsidiaries. You are funding the defense of the Ballard family, 
and anti-trafficking as a whole. Please, to defend and get the truth out. I don't know that Catherine has seen the text because she talked about in one of the interviews that they did that she doesn't ask about this stuff and she doesn't look about like look yeah. at stuff and she doesn't want to hear about it. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's I mean, a lot of things she just doesn't know. That is like an abuser's dream. Right. Oh, the person who I share a bed with every night doesn't even want to get involved with the work that I'm doing where I'm actually carrying out awful things. Yep. It's like ideal for mm. him. It's the perfect scenario. Perfect crime. So that the truth can prevail and the truth can set us free. Free to do the work that we feel called to do. So thank you Why and God bless. Thank you so much. Tune the shit out of his face. That one? Bro, you want to talk about how I'm. He's got no fucking pores. Tune? I don't face too No pores. Face. Come on. No pores. All right. Give, send, go. Give, send, go. Shine brightly. I've never heard of this one. I haven't either. Prayer wall, so it's religious based. I bet it's Mormon based. What are the odds? It does have that Mormon like. Gives it's like the light the world. Type. It's giving light the world. Testimonies. Testimonies. TV ministries. Hmm. Wait, I'd have to look this? into Alan this. Alan and more. Jess missions to Maui. We need forty three more dollars to be fully funded. And thank God for his provision to those of us who have sewn into this trip. It's for his kingdom and God will be exalted in Maui. No, it sounds like y'all want to go to Maui for vacation and you want people to pay for it. What? The whole island isn't destroyed. What? Why us? Because they're free, so they don't take some of the money like GoFundMe does. We are free. So how do they operate? What are they using to cover their expenses? It's got to be like a nonprofit Anyway, this is beyond what I want to be looking at right now. Let's let's take a look at the comments because I feel like that's important. In spite of rumors that say they have tons of money, they do not and never did. Tim did not get paid to help promote Sound of Freedom, only got help with some travel expenses. Yeah, because according to his that is he could barely make it to the event. 100% his own fucking fault. Yeah. Um I don't want to translate this. In a world full of liars, the mouth that dares to say the truth uh, is converted into the weapon most persecuted. I mean, that speaks volumes just with the first line. It's hard for me to understand how so many pass judgment before any judgment has been proven without any doubt. Our hearts have become so hardened and we fight f over tiny things when bigger picture is being missed. Children's lives are being stripped away from the innocence that is God given. Let's not forget what is, this is truly about. And I mean, this is just driving home the point that this is, they want, they don't want this to be Tim Ballard versus the plaintiffs. They want this to be the plaintiffs versus the greatest cause that you could ever champion, which is helping kids. I like this comment down here. Is Tim insane? In 2606, he implies that his family's been exposed to dangerous traffickers because the women came forward. He's been going around bragging for years that he's doing this work and having seen some of Ooh, his disguises, it wouldn't that. be hard for the traffickers to know he was the one who played them. He exposed himself and the family to dangerous traffickers. Someone worried about that. And then there's people that are going to defend him in the comments. Like, this is where the parasocial behavior steps yeah. in. Because when you feel the need Let to me defend throw a, someone on social media... throw myself on a grenade. As a professional actress for many years, I've seen and witnessed inexperienced actors get caught up in playing a role and blurring lines emotionally. Sounds like these women accusing Tim did this. I can imagine playing a role like these women... You're not a girl's girl. Yeah, just shut the fuck up. Damn, that is... Just getting caught children. up in the role... Just ask their children. You mean asking his oldest son who he took to the strip club with him? That he gave something potentially weird, allegedly? Hello? Like what? We stand also on the press. a professional system. actress. That looks legitimate. That looks very professional. Anyway. Valor. I hear shitting on uh, somebody's profession. But you did make the comment. Yeah. Just ask their children. They know what really goes on. I don't know what this is supposed to mean. Um, Okay. 
No, we're not. We're not going to implicate children in anything. It's not their know what job he did to with know his what's going son. on. Hello. Yeah. If anyone still uh, has doubts, still listen to this. He was good friends with Tim prior law enforcement. Okay. Cool. Shared and all our prayers are with you. I just don't know if I believe the accusations of these uh, of these women who women who say he did these things. The timing is e extremely suspicious. Right when the movie was doing gangbusters, this was after it had already gone through its full cycle. Mm -hmm. That after that they filed the lawsuit. I'm like. It's right here. Very it's obvious. how they think that just because he didn't sexually harass every woman he worked with, that it means that he didn't sexually harass any woman he worked with. It's disgusting how they try to imply the fact that they waited a period of time to come forward means it didn't happen, considering the waiting time is the norm for victims. So it shocks you that maybe he might be innocent? Do you realize how dangerous you sound? Witch hunt like crazy talk. <sighs> He's a man, right? There's no damn way he is innocent. You are dangerous to men. Like what? anybody fucking cares, what buddy. What is that comment? That was deranged. That's deranged. Anyway, we're not going to entertain this anymore. I don't so this is a whole series. Ever. Yeah, I think this this is just the beginning, it appears. I don't want to watch the rest of it, honestly. Yeah. Well, if, if he does see this, if he wants to bring me on his little podcast and say fat no. man bad to my face, I Absolutely am open to not. it. No, we are not entertaining that. I not am. Even a little bit. Uh, me no. as a, a, an entity of my own, I would I would definitely let him say there that. There is no such thing as face. a good faith discussion with somebody who produces a documentary like this. There's just not. No, I'm not trying to have a good faith discussion in any sort of capacity because he's not going to change me and I'm definitely not going to change him. It's We're not engaging, it's very so clear. So. But do, but do. Let me know. McKay. Jordan McKay. Stop. I don't have any tolerance for this. I don't. I have <laughs> absolutely none. You want to call me ugly to my face? That's great. I don't care. I know. I'm 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 real hurt about it. It's gonna keep me up at night. I'm I'm really I can't. You better make sure that. you're there with the, the holy water though, because um, the set up there with all the other you know, the death threats and the insults and the, all the other shit we get. Just throw yourself in with the masses. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> we are the little angel and devil. I will if you're like Mm, I'm gonna do something crazy. Oh, I'm there. I'm I'm there. <laughs> I will be the one helping you in your crazy choices. Reasonable. I'm very reasonable, but I I love doing it for the plot. <laughs> anyway, it's time to wrap this up. Yeah, Jordan said only an hour, and I got too mad, so I had two to and a half around. hours. Anyway, we love stirring the pot. Uh, we don't love people out here just blindly defending their friends, even if there is credible evidence otherwise. Credible allegations against them. Um, you know, be suspicious of your friends if they're being sus. There's nothing wrong with it. Nobody's like out there forcing you to stand behind somebody just because you have a relationship with them. No. So, there's a thing called boundaries. Everybody wants a kitty palate cleanser. Oh, he has been, Jordan has been uh, going ham, and that's why Baloney's right here. He's just been putty in her hands. Does he want to tell the world something? I'll boost the, the mic. All right, you heard the you, you heard hear the that. cat. He is being loud. Kate, yeah, can you guys hear that? You heard the kitty. Now go forth and do his bidding. <laughs> All right, show off a little bit. Show a little tail. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you want to come here, sleepy kibby? Come here. Oh, people did hear the purring. Awesome. Oh, good. I love that. I'm glad. That's the good thing. We're we're close now. And I can just reach over here. I have my audio interface. I can just boost the mic real quick and then dial it back down. No problems. Uh, the mic was making a weird hissing noise because I boosted it like crazy. So he did. Like he's not very loud. Now. Um, while he was doing it. It is nine thirty here. 
<laughs> All right, don't get us don't get us in trouble. No showing b-hole. All right, go. Here you go. Okay, everybody. It's been real. It's been fun. We love you. Um shout out to everybody for joining us in this trip down uh angry lane cuz that's all it makes me. Mm -hmm. Um we'll be back on Thursday for gaming stream and uh I think we're looking at Friday for a upload. We're going to do the Jubilee video. Cuz we we're got gonna a send sponsor. It. We so. got a sponsor, so we're going to send it on the Jubilee th video and if they claim us then whatever, it's fine. Um, Thanks for coming for your first live, Kai. So make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you follow us on Instagram, Jordan M K on Instagram. We post updates there. Um, stay tuned. Make sure you like the video before you leave. Make sure you're subscribed. We love you all. Grid night to you all. You're the only ones who make this bearable. Grid bless you, uh, and the stream will be. Thank you. Good night. Good night.